estoy afuera, pero el día que yo me muera, sé, sé que, que tendrás que llorar. Llorar, 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 llorar. Dirás que no me quisiste, pero vas a estar muy triste y así te me vas a quedar. Everybody and welcome to the Flagger Two Podcast. It's your boy Schultzy. I'm here with Akash Singh, Mark Gagnon, mm-hmm. Alex Media, Miles Media. We got the Truffle, and of course, we have Mariachi Hidalgo NYC. Hey, Give it up for them. hey. hey. big yeah. RIP to the goat, the greatest of all time, Vicente Fernandez. Passed over the weekend. It is uh, it is tragic, but the greatest of all time, for real, for real, for real. I said it on Instagram, you know, the Michael Jordan of Mariachi, but Michael Jordan might be the Vicente Fernandez of basketball. Mm. And if you don't know who he is, please go check him out. And I gotta say thank you so much to my boy Javier Loya, who put me on when I was in college. We all be out there singing Mariachi. So Javier, thank you so much. Now let's get this podcast started. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Crazy story that happens Mm. over the weekend. Mm. Um, Turns out Nancy Reagan, Ronald Reagan's wife, uh, used to give the fire dome. It was uh, there was a tweet that went out. It was in reference to Madonna. Who gives a fuck about Madonna? But the tweet (laughs) was comparing Madonna at 63 to Nancy Reagan at 64. Right. Madonna's on this bed, like looking, you know, all like uh, like a snack. Like, I mean, look, like she looks snack. great for 63. She's blah, like an blah, blah, inspired blah. snack. She's a snack. Yes. Yeah. She's a Werther's original, but a snack. Yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless. Werther's like, original? It's still a snack. <laughs> yeah. And then the next picture is of Nancy Reagan and their whole family and everything. And uh, this was tweeted out by Ben Shapiro's sister. And in a way to discredit uh, Ben Shapiro's sister, people started exposing certain things about Nancy Reagan, a reputation that he, uh, that she had that I was not aware of. Were yeah. you guys aware of this? They, they didn't teach me this in school. Yeah, Did not I'm teach us this at all. They always leave out the important shit in school. They yeah. do. They don't teach you taxes. They uh-huh. should do they oral history in school. Oral history. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very yes. Important. Yes. So basically, um, This was written in Kitty Kelly's biography of Nancy Reagan. She was renowned in Hollywood for performing oral sex. Mm. Just say yes, Nancy. In the days when she was Nancy (laughs) Davis was known to give the best blowjob in town, not only in the evening, but in offices. That was one of the reasons she was very popular on the MGM lot. It must have made her very popular with Ronnie as well. Wow. Mm. Wow. Which I don't get what that means. Like best offices, like best blowjobs, not only in the evening, but also in offices. Yeah. Why is that, that means she wasn't just going to their house and fucking him. She yeah. was doing yeah, it. Yeah, she wasn't sucking like, dick after dinner. She was yeah. sucking dick after lunch, Mark. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulling up to the desk. Wow. You know what the most impressive thing is this is? That best if you're blow- a woman that's hot, you can become the first lady by sucking dick? After lunch, bro. No, that makes perfect sense to me. Ah, yeah. here's that's not I, impressive. That's <laughs> privilege. <laughs> here's where it's really impressive. Yeah. Best blowjob in town in Hollywood. Yeah. A whole bunch of girls back then who are like, look, if I'm going to make it, I got to suck some dick. Yeah. That was what it was back then. Uh, she you was think the that they best knew it? in Hollywood. Yo, did Nancy... Wait, so Nancy, why wasn't she a bigger star? Here's a question. <laughs> One, why wasn't she a bigger star? Two, did she start... Did she start the avalanche that became Harvey Weinstein? Did she set the precedent? Maybe nobody was sucking dick for roles before that. Mm. But she came out there and started giving up the throat. And then all of a sudden, these executives were like, I guess we get throat for roles. Well, let's so not associate roles? such a what? bad thing what with something. What major roles has she done? I don't know anybody who did that. It was, it was only the, the <laughs> what's that fuck, Marilyn Monroe. And yeah. she sucked presidential dick, too. She didn't even become first lady, yeah, loser. Yeah, Yo, real up. talk, <laughs> we got to relook at, what is her yeah. name? Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. She sucks, bro. Yeah. yeah. She really, Brittany Renner. Throat trash. Out here sucking dick, not getting nobody for it. Yeah, mm. we go. Think about it. Mm. Nancy motherfucking Reagan sucked dick and became the president's wife, made that motherfucker the president. Mm-hmm. 
Marilyn sucked Monroe. his dick into the presidency. That's Man. oh that's my lord. That's Man, I don't even talk about Marilyn that's Monroe. What we were she before. was Joe DiMaggio's wife, though. That's not bad. Who Ooh. the fuck is Joe yeah, DiMaggio? Joe You're DiMaggio. a New Yorker. Oh, you yeah, don't know yeah. Joe DiMaggio. I know who Joe DiMaggio is. Yeah. It means nothing to me. Yeah. <laughs> it means nothing to me. Reagan? Ray, we're talking about yeah. presidents, not baseball players. Baseball ain't even a sport. Yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I'm America's saying. pastime, because that shit is past. That shit sucks. Real talk. He could have been talk president Talk some shit about day. baseball. Y'all talk about my fucking pants being high every episode. That's baseball. <laughs> That's baseball. Yeah. These motherfuckers purposely put their socks all high up, yeah. walk around like idiots. This is what we were saying before. She went from the floatus to the throatus. To the mm. throatus. Yep. The woman is the throatus. And we put we give him respect to Marilyn Monroe, because she mm. could stand on top of a grate with the air coming up. That's fire, yeah. though. That was actually kind yeah, of cool. Yeah, but but, but you know what's even more cool? She had the heavies. Yeah. You know what's even more cool? Oh, gee, sucking, sucking an actor's dick and then sucking a president's dick. She sucked and it into it's the, the same guy, bro. And she did that. She did that. Mm -hmm. She deserves this, credit. This snitching ass bitch, Kitty Kelly, want to spread rumors about how far the head was. Nobody ever talked about Kitty Kelly's head. Mm. Nobody yeah. ever wrote Never. a biography about how Never. good dick you yeah. suck, yeah. hater. You know, I think I, I think I read she tried to do this to make... Uh, Republicans look bad because they were shaming Bill Clinton so much for getting for cheating and somebody else cheated. She and think she was, conservative women don't suck dick? Yeah, that's what she's trying to act like. And honestly, <laughs> this <laughs> just tells you <laughs> this just tells you how much Hillary failed. Because Ronald was faithful. Ronald stayed married. Ronald was happy. Ronald loved Nancy. And why? Because she was the throat tuss. Let me go a little further. Because conservative women suck better dick than uh, liberal women. Uh. All right, now you got to defend that, though. That's yeah. classic. It's a fact. That's classic. It's a fact. Yeah. How you going to put your hand through a liberal woman's hair when that shit is buzzed down and okay. dyed purple? <laughs> How you going to do that? Yo, a liberal, a nice conservative woman got some long locks. Put your hand into. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Who's more volume, <laughs> baby. Who's more comfortable on their knees? A nice religious Christian conservative girl Ooh. or some can atheist liberal it? bitch marching? You, Always got a march going? to go to this bitch. Can you walk keep going? away from me all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Knees all tired from walking. Yeah. Knees I'm all saying. tired from walking. Then you can't do what you got to do. Mm. All right. Gluck. Yeah. Gluck. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, this, this, this is what go. we were saying before. Is like if you spend all your time saving sex for marriage, you, you got to get good at something else. Yep. Mm. You know what I mean? If you're short, you better be good at shooting. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Steph Curry six three. Mm. You got to learn how to shoot. You're not gonna be in there banging on motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. That's what these conservative women are. Yep. They're not giving a coochie out to everybody. So the head got to be fire. Way mm. go. Mm. Absolutely fire. Also, they're so horny because they're not having sex. They got to do something with dicks. Mm. They just want to play with it. Do well, you know what I mean? You know when you starving for bread, but you're trying to diet, so you don't eat bread. So when the bread's on the table, you just squeeze it. <laughs> no. Is that nah. just me? No one's ever yeah, done that. Oh, you. damn. Okay, fine. You but did still, that to my plate. I do that to everybody's plate. I just got to squeeze. I got to mash. I got to do something. But that's them with dicks. They want inside them so bad. What's the one place it can go? Throat. Ear mm. also. Ear. Yeah. But ain't no low key. That's what they said about the Catholic school girls back in the loophole. day. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. going in there. That's poop, very poop, true. did you call yeah. it? Yeah. The poop hole loophole. Oh. Of course. The poop hole loophole. Like God yeah. don't know what an asshole is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that. Like God don't know. You know what I mean? Like God didn't put it he there. Make that shit like, that's super not tight. why I made those. Yeah, that's an exit only. Oh no, he know yeah. why he made them, son. <laughs> he know why you he, think he made, made them. like a turnstile on a subway. Like you can come in or you can go out. Or go out. It's whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. It's really whatever now, there's you want. Some people listening probably being like, oh, well, that's and not sometimes true. you could rub the turnstile okay. while you're right. getting head. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes you, you could lick the turnstile also Who while you're getting head. What? You could just lick it and rub it, but never put anything in it. But you could lick it and rub it. No sense. While you getting head? While I'm getting head, I can get my shit licked and rubbed. Wait, what? No. Yeah. What? A turnstile? Right now, I thought that it was a metaphor okay, for yeah. my dick <laughs> or for my asshole. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the turnstile is my yeah. asshole. Oh, okay. So I would like that play with. Okay. Yeah. Okay? I'd like that play with. Babe, in case you're listening, yeah. we're getting married in six days. Yeah. So I'd like to set a precedent. I want a, I want a relationship like Ronald Reagan. You want to be treated like the president. I want to be treated like a president, yeah, okay? Yeah. Look, I, I cannot believe they try to shame this woman. Shouts to all the conservative women out there getting their fucking esophagus busted down. That's yeah. how you hold a family down. Real That's talk. how you keep a family. How do you know they're not more prudish, though? How do you know they're not like, oh, I don't want to Because they get that. divorced less. Nah. Bill what? Clinton cheated. It's a case in point. Mm -hmm. What is Monica Lewinsky's He was the first in? Democrat after Reagan. She's liberal, Monica Lewinsky. Ooh, yeah, that's, I, that's what they encourage predatory behavior. Liberal These girls don't give good head. head. At all. Liberal girls don't give good head. They don't, you think you think Wheezy? But they got fire. You though. think Wheezy <laughs> and Mandy whoa, whoa. give head good? 
I don't know. <laughs> Ain't no way. <laughs> Ain't no way, right? No. Talking all that shit about uh, how they give gray head all the goddamn time. No way. Uh, Capped. <laughs> it's cap. Sombrero. It's sombrero. It's a giant It's cat. sombrero. Yeah. What's the Bible studies? Bri Brianna? Yeah. Brianna? Brianna Bible studies? Brianna, yeah. Turn a pillar into salt <laughs> or something. What is it's that? Salty. A oh, pillar of salt. Why is it so salty? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Slurped up all the liquid, left salt. Jeez. That's how you know it's firehead. That's how you know it's firehead. Turn to come into just salt. <laughs> like took just the liquid out, yeah. spit out the salt. Mm. Bible yeah. studies with Brianna. Give me a line. That a, <laughs> yeah. That's a compliment though. That's right? a of fire course, that's I true. bet you when she chooses the man that she wants to be with for the rest of her life, yes. it's gonna be fire. Gotcha. All right. That's what I assume. Why would she not want to please the man she wanna be with for the rest of her life? If God gave you that man, aren't you gonna do something good for him? If you don't believe in God, why are you gonna try to please him? Mm. You're just thinking about you. <laughs> If you can't hold a relationship, ladies, start looking the man, the woman in the mirror. You know what Yo, I mean? Mm. Real talk. That's a good. <laughs> and that ass woman's mouth is probably closed. Yeah. And, and that's know, the issue. Because think about it, these liberals, all they're doing is thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. well, how, mm. What can I do to make me happy? Mm -hmm. well, if you, you're a person of God, mm. you you already trying to make a man happy. Yeah. Sir, yeah. This is in your life, in. every single day, you're like, how can I make that you man go from happy? Father to daddy. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. What do liberal women give better, though? Do you think they do Grief? anything better? Nah, Grief is good. Nah, they Opinions. Got, they got fire, fire box. They got fire box because they started earlier. Uh, no. Yes, yes, you got it. They got fire box. Nah, nah, They're more likely nah, to nah, throw up the nah, threesome. Nah, you probably get the nah, nah, no. You're going to get a threesome with a liberal box chick. Box all carved up from abortions. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what, what do you mean carved Real up? Real tough. Like Box all carved up like a fucking like bathroom native... door. <laughs> oh <my laughs> it, got, it got tattoos on it and shit. It's like a Native <laughs> American cave. Yes. Like, there's buffaloes in it? Buffalo, <laughs> spears. All them IUDs <laughs> they've been shoving up there. Yeah. got to affect it. Box is <laughs> full. It's like prison. It should look like a studio apartment, some of them boxes. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? The Schmorschen Clinic just leaving things in there. Yeah. What? Gloves and shit. Use your <laughs> mouth for more than taking plan B's, bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus. I'm just snapping and pointing. Little <laughs> women gotta be good at something. You gotta give it up to one of them. What are they good at? I don't know. They gotta be good at something. Nagging. <sighs> probably more sexually adventurous. They probably bring more things into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they don't have good head. Like, let me tell you something. <laughs> if the head is fire, you never need an adventure. <laughs> Do you know That's what I'm saying? True, if the bro. head is fire, That's true. like listen, if the head is fire, you don't need an adventure in sex or in life. Nobody going zip lining if they got good dick suck at home. You think? <laughs> yo, if the if head you is got good dick suck at home, why you want a zip line, yo? Because it's fun. Just get your dick suck. <laughs> That's the adventure. That's you can't come facts. zip lining. Say what? You can't like zip lining is just a different exactly. thing. Say what, like just yeah. no, say what you just said. Say what you just said. You say what you just said. You can't come zip lining. Exactly. You're Mark. Supreme, stupid. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> no, but that's all I'm saying. If the head is fire at home, you don't need to do adventurous shit. Hmm. You don't need to. It's facts. No, because it's Tends to be white people doing all that adventurous shit. Yo, so what you go, say is who so. goes who goes to <laughs> Africa to build the wells? Uh, white women. White women. Yeah. Liberal or conservative? Liberal? Liberal. Liberal. Yeah. Exactly, bro. <laughs> what? Exactly, bro. I could have gone either way. Is I know, right? say exactly. But I hit that exactly, <laughs> exactly. so strong. You believe that. I just slap. I'm just saying, exactly. bro. Mundo. Hey, conservative dudes eat better pussy. You think so? 100%, what? yeah. I believe that. I don't that. know if I believe that. I believe that. Honestly, no, I don't believe that. I don't even believe it. I just said it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I just said it. But, uh, Latinos tend to be conservative and they known for their boxing. Oh, that's a good ass point. Oh, I'm back on. I got you, bro. Yeah, thank you. That's a good ass point. Not my Latinos. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still not sold, but listen, we're talking about women right now. Actually, and what could know. they be doing to keep a man like, married? I want to please my girl. Like I'm, like I got to look out for her. It's got to be close to orgasm. That's what I gap. thought. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I think 15 of them. No, they no, keep in them all clean. seriousness, I think I think liberal dudes. Yep. Yeah. Probably eat better pussy. Yeah, because they're because they're losers. Yeah, <laughs> if you're good at eating pussy, your dick is small. What? That's a fact. I don't know. It's a I fact. Those women yeah, can't yeah, come it's from a penetration. Fact. It's a fact. That, that one's a fact. If you got if you got the meat, if you got serious meat, full meat or what? if you got full fucking meat, um, Arby's. Yeah, if yeah. you're coming through at Arby's, yeah, have you got that chorizo? You got. You don't need to do anything else. It's like I could lick it and then we could play around, or I could fill it. Mm. If I and then it's like end of discussion. You're not worried about anything else. Is it a dick size or is it the way you're using it? Is is if you have a small dick, you have to use it in a certain way. If you got a big dick, you just get to be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Are saying? Are you sure? Hundred percent, bro. I don't 
don't know if I believe 100%. this, 100%. I fuck plenty of guys with big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> and them motherfuckers don't do nothing. Yo. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's a fact, mm. bro. It's a fact of life. So shouts to all the conservative women that are going to town. Mm. Going to town. But if Keeping you're a conservative a man. woman, you want a liberal dude then. I'm trying to think about the head that I've had in my life from conservative chicks. Not as necessarily dynamic. <laughs> kind of a one note kind of thing, right? Actually, low key. Conservative head is fire, dude. <laughs> Conservative head is fire, dude. Yo. Passion and love. Really? Yo. You know why I believe liberal men give better head to conservative women? Because God wants them together to create balance. Oh, you got to have different true. opinions that, that helps balance out the world, bring us all to center. Mm. So liberal men, better head, conservative women. Come on, not even close. Conservative women, better head. Not even close. 100%. I, I can't believe this Guaranteed. for a second. You would possibly think liberal women would give good head. You have no And the reasons. more conservative no, you I are as a woman, better the better box. the head. Like Ben mm -hmm. Shapiro's sister, firehead, I bet. Yeah. That girl could suck cock. Okay. That's Guaranteed. She's still fun. married. How about we fun. just say this? Ben Shapiro's sister, married, will remain so. Will remain so. Happy why. family. Guaranteed because of why. how good throat that she gets. All right, you okay. had to get top from someone. They give you an option, right? Yeah. Nancy Reagan. Yeah. Formerly Nancy Davis. Yeah. Or Madonna. Oh, it's not even oh, close. Oh, it's not even close. Ain't nobody writing about Madonna's head. That's true. Yo, all that bitch does is talk about sex, and nobody ever said, uh, I got great head from Madonna. No one has ever said that. More you talk about sex. You You know what I mean? Think about that. Hmm. I'm just saying, when the more she, you talk about this when sex. When she kissed Drake, Drake was like, yuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. He was like, I'm not into it. Yeah, he's like, what you doing? And he likes older women, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I think that she's uh, what is it called? Like, um, it's a posturing, you yeah. know, like when you're covering uh, up for your overcompensating, mm. overcompensating, hundred percent, lack of generosity. That's yeah. why she divorced. Mm. <laughs> mm. So then, how do you get how, like how do you get your girl on board then? Like, what should a guy do if they want? They want I mean, hypothetically, <laughs> yeah, I, sure. have, I make my sure my my girl listen to the Daily Wire with Ben Shapiro. <laughs> I got the Daily Wire going on all the time. I yeah. got Crowder. You know who's Louder doing Rush Limbaugh. Crowder. Rush Limbaugh. Girl. Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> right. I got the Blaze. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got all these what motherfuckers. What do you do if your girls listen to NPR? What would you do? Say again? If your girls listen to NPR and you walk in the I house. I got to turn that shit off immediately, bro. <laughs> Smack the iPod out of Yeah. Here. What do we listen to NPR, That's dude? That's abstinence music. <laughs> Real talk. That's how you become unhappy in your in your marriage, unhappy in your relationship. Yeah. True 100%. or false? Have you stroked a Glenn Beck? No. Never? I don't do that. You I don't. Never, I don't you never put it on in the back. background while you're stroking. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't stroke to them. But I have to let their ideas permeate, permeate. my wife yes, and our relationship. Just and by on. osmosis, it makes the head phenomenal. Yes, <laughs> they don't even realize it. But the more that they talk about these, the immigrants, they're coming, the fucking horde yeah. or whatever. Yeah, what do they call yeah. them? The caravan, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And you're listening to it, and your mouth starts to get wet. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> ladies, try it right now. Like, you put on some yeah. of that Ben Shapiro. What, yeah. Listen, read Ben Shapiro's sister's tweets, and your mouth will just start getting wet. Yeah, dude. yeah. The way that she tweets, just have it in the background, like white noise, white power noise. Mm. Just have it in the background, <laughs> mm. and yo, suddenly 100%. your salivary glands just activate. Yes, mm. dude. You could tell by the way that Ben Shapiro's sister tweets, wet mouth. Oh, I wet bet. Wet mouth. I bet. Super. Classic. Super soaker. Think how much you just, classic, you just start generating saliva. Yep. Classic. 100%. 100%. I'll read some of her tweets. Go. Right. Mm. Turns out good decisions lead to good outcomes. Ooh. Oh, outcomes. Yeah, Which yeah. Which lead to yeah, happiness. It, it sure Pretty does crazy. come out. What do you think mm. about it? Mm. Fire. Great conservative woman. Yo, to Tommy Lauren. Is that how you pronounce her name? Tommy Lauren. I got both names wrong. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Yo, can I be honest with Mark you? Mark pretending he don't jerk off this bitch every day. <laughs> Let me it's be like, honest with you. Yeah, I'll be honest. Tommy Lauren. Oh yeah. No. She putting it down. Cap. Yeah. Cap. Cap mm -hmm. I don't buy her as a real conservative. I think that she's kind of posturing I'm with it. I'm glad you said that because I felt like she wouldn't be good at it and I had to justify this argument. Yeah, and, and I think it's kind of fake and I think she's just wearing the costume because it can lead to success. You need a real conservative woman. Real conservative. You could tell if they're a real conservative woman by how they give the throat up. It's mm. facts, bro. Yep. yep. It's facts, bro. I mean, it's just what it is. Candace Owens. Oof. Oof. It's crazy. Is it crazy? It could be Cap. It could be Cap. <laughs> but... 
It could be Cap. I'll be honest. It could be opportunistic Cap. She stands. She with might Cap, be an bro. opportunist. I don't know if the head is fire. That's how I would know if she's really, truly a conservative and believes everything she says. Huh. Sometimes I think she's saying stuff for attention. So if you were like a reporter and there was a conservative woman running for like governor or something, what would you ask her? If I was a reporter. Yeah. And she's running for governor, <laughs> running for president, and you're the reporter in the room. Okay. So I'll, I, I can be her if you want. Yeah, sure. Uh, any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, okay. You right here? Sir? Yeah, with the sombrero. With the sombrero? <laughs> in the front row? Yeah, I you, have a question. Yeah, you with the sombrero. Yeah, there's earthquakes going crazy. Yeah. I have a question yeah. for you. Yeah, what's your question? Um, and Candace, you're running for office. Well, my name's not Candace. I'm no, just any a, hypothetical I'm just a, conservative woman, hypothetical what question would you ask to vet their conservativeness? Yeah. Oh. To make sure they're about it and not capping. Yeah, yeah. yeah last question. You, you can want, have it. Okay, I have a question. Yeah, well, what um, is it? And what office are they running for? Uh, governor of uh, Florida. Okay. Um, you're running for governor of Florida. Yep. Um, do you suck cocks good <laughs> with your throat? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's an inappropriate question to ask. I I see, no more questions. Uh, I don't see why the, yeah. <laughs> We're not taking any more questions. Thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see that it has any uh, bearing on my office. <laughs> no, uh, it doesn't have any bearing on your office. It has bearing on your personal life. Uh, Which is none of my business, and that's why I would never ask that question. Uh, mm. Out of respect. Yeah. Is the building falling down? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what is happening? It's fucking Jurassic Park outside. Yeah, dude. What the <laughs> fuck is going on? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think that I, I'm just like so proud of Nancy Reagan. Yeah. Yo, honestly, dude, this made me a Reagan Republican. I'm a Reagan Republican. Yeah. I, I, this is it, dude. This. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, listen, these are the, my values. Family. Okay. Staying together. Lots of head. These are things that I stand with. Lower mm. taxes, 100%. Mm. All, I'm aligned with everything. Yo, if you just state Republican values, do you guys disagree with any of them? <laughs> just state the ones. Now, it's positioned in this way. But you can state liberal yeah, values. Of course, of course, of course, of course. But uh, it's positioned in this way so that you seem like an absolute baboon if you disagree with any of them. Yeah. yeah. But state the Republican values. It's family. Family. Religion. Yeah. Family got guns. Religion, enough. Small government. I should be able to protect people. I mean, people guns. I love, like, guns. First Amendment. Well, they won't say guns. They'll say protect your family and your home. Protect, protect your family. the Constitution. Yeah. That's what they'll say. Um, and then fire throat. <laughs> Is that one of them? That's what we're saying now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what if they took that on? Yeah, what if I they're like, they listen, yo, we give fire throat. Like, dude, you would you realize conservatives, we don't give fire throat to just anybody, but to our man, we make sure he's super happy and the throat that we give is way better. You would crush liberals. Mm. All yeah. these liberal women just walk around thinking that they're better in bed than these Republicans just because they're conservative and they don't go around throwing a pussy everywhere. Mm. But if they found out that they're actually more trash yep. and these dudes were happier, not because of God or religion or any of these things, but because their wives were just going full fucking clock. Oh, man. <laughs> All of them purple states, they're going red quick. They're going red. 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 What dude isn't going to vote for head? <laughs> what dude isn't going to vote for head? Just Swing come votes. out there. Yo, yep. if Trump runs in 2024, just say it, yo. Say it. Plucked her out of Slovenia. For the gluck. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, that's it. Just say it. Yeah. This is what makes me happy. It's yeah. my longest marriage. Mm -hmm. I had a kid at 80 years old. Why? She wanted one. Head is fire. Mm. Gonna give it to her. Mm. Gotta give it to her. Yo, Nancy, I heard, used to really kind of low-key run shit. Like, she had a lot of political power. You know why? Because she gave up the head. What mm. political power she had? Yeah. Son, apparently he consulted her on everything. Apparently, Reagan and Nancy, they were like very like, he ran shit by her. She had a lot of power relative to most first ladies. Was she his brain trust? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be a little Wayne line soon. Uh, yeah, that's, that's man. That's what I heard. Hillary, too busy trying to be president her goddamn self. That's why the bitch lost at everything. Yeah. Mm. Now, we talked about this briefly before, but do you want to recap hottest first lady? Now that, she, now that you know she got the fire Yes, I, like I said before, Melania, 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 but... It's Melania, then Nancy, and then probably... Michelle. No. It's Melania, Nancy, and then probably... What was the uh, one yeah, who I'll got the brains that. on uh, her I'll dress? say what you have to say to not... <laughs> what Kennedy. was it? Jackie Kennedy. <laughs> Jeez. Jackie Kennedy. Talk about brain. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Monica Lewis, got Yo, some brain on her dress. Real talk, dude. <laughs> hey, guys. Infamous tour, okay? We're coming for New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve's Eve in Boston, we just added a fourth show. Boston, y'all asked for it, so we added that fourth show. That is our final uh, 
City of the Year for the Infamous Tour. New Year cracks off is going to be crazy. Portland, Seattle. Uh, we just uh, added Oxnard, Sacramento, Brea, Coachella, San Jose, Winnipeg. We added another show in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto. We got three shows. Uh, Birmingham, Alabama, New Orleans, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Montreal. We added another show. New York City. We added another show in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Make sure you check it out, theandrewschultz.com. Get those tickets ASAP if they are still available. Akash, what you got? Yo, first of all, thank you so much, DC, to everybody who came out. Literally every show sold more tickets than the one uh, before it. So that means y'all were spreading the word, and I truly appreciate that. We're starting the new year back home, January 7th and 8th, Dallas, Texas. I'm coming to Hyenas. You better bring your ass out. We better sell out all them shows. January 27th through 29th, I'm at the Comedy Vault in Batavia, Illinois. February 3rd and 4th, I'm at the Sandman Comedy Club in Richmond, Virginia. And Canada, we coming through March 11th, Vancouver Playhouse. Vancouver, bring that ass out. Every Indian dude in Surrey better be there. April 1st and 2nd, I'm going to be at Austin. And April 22nd and 23rd, Toronto. I'm there. Finally, let's go. Let's sell out every fucking show at the Royal Theater, bigger venue. Just like I said it would be. Go to AkashSingh.com for tickets. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys. We're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure that you got the best boners in the business. And the blue shoes, the one that's going to deliver, deliver it to you, deliver it to you is what I meant to say. Okay, bluechew.com. Make sure you use that promo code flagrant and you're going to get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. These are the best bonus in the business. Fellas, your girl deserves it. It's the one that we use. Same active ingredients. It's inside Cialis or Viagra, but this is the chew. This is the one that's going to deliver the happiness. This is the one that's going to make that first impression that you need to make. And this is the one that's going to keep your family good. You know who was using it? Ronald motherfucking Reagan. Mm. I can't say for a fact that he was, but I assume he he was and if i know what nancy was doing i know that he wanted to deliver so bluechew.com make sure you use the promo code flagrant let's get back to the show um great day great day great day second to last day uh that i'm doing a podcast before i'm getting married it's Hell about to yeah, go down boy. it's wedding uh, week it's wedding week Ooh, we wedding are officially week. in wedding week yeah, i i, I was uh, very impressed by my my girl, and I think that this might be just a female quality in general, uh, uh, my girl's ability to fall asleep uh, <laughs> while watching uh, movies yeah, or TV. Insane. Like it's We were insane. watching one of the best UFC cards in, I don't want to say history, right? But I'll say it. It was <laughs> unbelievable. One of the greatest upsets in fight sport history. Right. Right? Right. And my girl was passed the fuck out. <laughs> Just passed the fuck out. Like, didn't even make it through the Noons fight. The Noons fight, it's girls fighting. Yeah. This is supposed to be what you're interested in, yeah, right. if anything. Completely knocked out. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, why was Cosby pilling these bitches? Like, to <laughs> just put on something mildly entertaining. Put yeah. on your own show. You yeah. made a show. Put it on. The girls will fall asleep and you shouldn't do it, but you could do what you want to do. And uh, I was just, it was unbelievable. I'm like screaming, like I'm shaking yeah. feet over my legs, like moving them. And uh, unbelievable ability to just pass it the fuck out. It wasn't even that late, right? Like the fight was 10. I mean, maybe midnight. It's at midnight. You know what I mean? Like, but still. Yeah, it wasn't that late because by the time I got off stage, basically everything was over. Yeah. Like I got, I did a 9.45 show, get off stage, and pretty much everything is done. Yeah. So she's falling asleep at like 11.30. And man, good for you. Yeah. Like why didn't he use that you? in the defense? Why, was it, why didn't he say like, <laughs> oh no, we were watching the Super Bowl or something yeah. like really, <laughs> really uh, boring for women. And, and she just passed out. Like every, I didn't pill her. Every guy went in the jury to be like, oh yeah, no, he is. She fell asleep on her own. That could have been his defense. <laughs> yeah. She fell asleep on her own. He still would have been guilty, but that part, they'd have been like, well, that. I gave her yeah. a cappuccino. <laughs> fell asleep. There's nothing that these girls can stay awake for. There's nothing. Like honestly, I'm I'm glad that I'm doing the vows in person. If it was, I don't <laughs> don't your, make them too good. Your Zoom wedding, I'm yeah. shocked that everybody just didn't fall asleep oh, yeah. no, in yeah, the middle yeah, yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, like, probably some did. people might have. Who, no, you know? who noticed? Yeah, you don't know. Who noticed? How do I know? That's a good point. Hey, you can sleep if you want to. Sleep just as slumped you are. up. Yeah, slumped up. Bro. Slumped the fuck up. Now, anyway, I mean that's insane though. Now yeah. your vows can't be too entertaining because if they are, that's a problem. Oh, she then she just start asleep. falling asleep. Mm. Exactly. So, I have to keep him just you don't, enough. If she's unhappy with your vows, you just be like, well, I was just trying to make sure you stayed awake. Yeah. Now you got a little out. Now, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, how do you know the shows you pick aren't trash? 
It's this is a UFC. great UFC card, he said. But I'm just saying, it's like she stayed awake for Kevin Hart's show. You told us that. Now nah, she that? turned that shit off after 15 minutes. No, she's she, like, this is giving me too much anxiety. But she stayed awake. Yeah, the because time. it was so like Good. tension filled. It, yeah, it was just being awake. <laughs> she's just not used to that. She's like, oh, this is something I have to pay attention to and like absorb. Mm. Like it, it could, if it's Salt Lake Housewives <laughs> yeah, of, yeah, yeah. U, of Utah, whatever yeah. that is. Salt Lake Housewives. Salt Lake Utah. Housewives of Utah. Like that can just be on in the background mm -hmm. and she can like cook or like pack or do something. And yeah. then it's just girls fighting. Yeah. Mm. Right. And yeah, that's just perfect for her. Sex in the city. Emotional she fighting. She'll stay up for physical fighting. Melatonin. No, melatonin. Knock yeah, the fuck out. Knock yeah, out. I don't know what type of trauma she's dealing with. That that <laughs> is like her comfort zone. Is that, is that there's abuse going on in the background? She's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no. It's fucking wild times, guys. Boys about to get married. Yeah, how you yeah. feel? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. I'm trying to write these vows, but we keep getting in fights. And I had to tell her last night. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell her last night. I was like, you keep fighting with me. We're not going to have no vows, yo. You need to give me a day of just being awesome. So I could write down how awesome I feel about you. Because if we get into a fight every single fucking night, we at the restaurant getting into fights and shit. We gave the people a show yeah, last night. Let's go. Woo! Amanda Nunez. Bro, it was a Salt Lake City Housewives of Utah. Oh. We had Salt Lake City Housewives of Utah at American wow. Bar NYC last night. Oh, yeah. let's go. I mean, all the emotions came in hot, everything good. Uh. Started fighting, staring into space, both of us. And we had, a, we had a table not facing each other. We're facing the whole restaurant. We had an amazing table facing the whole restaurant so the whole restaurant is just look at us perform wow. ignoring the fuck out of someone not even peripheral vision like if we look straight we both see a little bit of each other so we just turned out <laughs> like 20 degrees <laughs> so we wouldn't even catch each other in peripheral this is before or Fight. after the food came middle of it wow. oh, courses damn. coming Round in one. i'm not playing Wait, ding, ding. Coming, serving a tense oh man Oh, okay. Wait, we were on like an Instagram diary love story Wait about for you it. guys. So I said it's the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. I said it's the whole movie. So we're fighting, right? right? And then the waitress comes over and then she looks at the bill that she put down that doesn't have a credit card. And she's like, oh, are you not uh, ready yet? And I and I and I'm already <laughs> fighting with my girl. And you see, there ain't no credit card there. <laughs> so it took me everything in my power to just not fucking curse this fucking nosy bitch out. <laughs> you know I'm fighting with my girl. Everybody in the goddamn restaurant knows I'm fighting with my girl. It's obvious. Okay. Our volume's getting high. Oh no, I'm up. ready. I'm yeah. very ready. <laughs> The way staff knew that was your table. They're like, which table is it? Oh, the fighting one. Yeah, yeah the yeah, fighting yeah. one. We were the fighting table. Oh, the fighting so, table. Oh, yeah, Ooh, we were going through good. that shit. I mean, like, we were fighting so much. She took, we were splitting the steak and splitting the Branzino. She took a good 66% of that steak. No. I had to call her out. <laughs> I said, she started cutting through the steak. I said, damn. I said, how much of the steak you going to take? <laughs> on her wedding week you know what I mean? this this girl's a skeleton this girl's been dieting like crazy she's just trying to get one meal a day in to get some nutrients she took 66 percent of that filet uh. you know what i mean she took 66 percent of that filet oh you couldn't fill up on the bread i yeah. see uh-uh we're not doing bread so Come how on, did you huh? retaliate you got Say more what? than brussels sprouts or what? Say what no i guilted her into cutting that little fucking 33 percent back <laughs> you know what i mean i need that 66 <laughs> I need that 66 You know what I'm saying Yeah no I got you I, yeah, know what yeah, I was fucking I was in a bad mood last night The fucking, the waiter brings the fucking Prancino over And he just He puts it down And I, I'm like fighting with her As he puts it down And I just Is it deboned <laughs> <laughs> So we're fighting And then We got through it And I fucked up. No. That was on me. No. I know this shit crazy. Yeah, right? really. I don't believe I almost it's never possible. fuck up. Yeah, almost never. So, why would they? Especially emotionally, you're so evolved. Yeah, I'm so evolved. Just a, I mean, just the fucking the best at conflict. The best ever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I fucked up. I, I fucked up. And yeah, I fucked up a little bit. <laughs> Son, I fucked up a little bit. It's her week. Yeah, Say it's what? Her it's her week. week. Like nah, this is her, her week. day. <laughs> no, it's, it's her, her day. It's that's our why she, week. Like, that's why she's falling asleep at UFC. Poor girl's been like struggling, putting this thing together. You need to write vows. She hasn't even done it yet. Yeah, she be bothering it. me up. <laughs> Every time I try to put pen to paper, I'm not feeling it. Yeah, y'all are gonna fight so much these next two weeks. Really? It is gonna happen. Maybe two weeks. Two weeks. I'm getting married Saturday. Y'all gonna fight so much these next four days? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming? <laughs> yeah, we yeah, off for two weeks. That's right. That's, that's, that's right. our wedding. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, y'all. Yeah. This is it. This is the peak of it. You just—it's really? just constant. Like I'm stressed. You're stressed. It'll all melt by Friday night. We got to a good. We got to a little bit better place. 
you know what, what happens with we got with to us? A little bit better place. No, we did. <laughs> well, this is when the, the this is what happened. It's like we got to a little better place, and basically, we it was one of those things. Like I think when we're like disconnected, right? We're mm-hmm. not if if we're disconnected and we're not being intimate, right? Yeah. We're not like having sex. That's like that's like validating and reinforcing and like reinforces the love, right? Mm-hmm. And then what happens is when you get further, it's harder to put yourself in a position to be vulnerable, Mm -hmm. right? And validate the other person because you're protecting yourself. So you move further and further away Mm -hmm. and that stops you guys from giving the love that you actually need. And it makes giving the love that much more difficult. And then makes you or me and I heard even more sensitive to even the littlest things, right? So like me going like, damn, about the steak is a joke if we're intimate loving each other yeah. all this kind of stuff yeah. i mean yeah. i was fucking sick the whole weekend you know yeah. what I mean? and we've been stressed about this fucking wedding so it's like that distance and emotional distance makes everything that more sense much more sensitive mm-hmm. so it was like little stupid things that i'm yeah. like asking her uh i would like ask her to do something and like i felt like she was just not doing it just because i asked her to do it yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah, like like I, we, I, I the fight's on and then she's talking to her mom and i'm like baby you think you could take the call in the room and then she's like, yeah, yeah. And then she just keeps <laughs> talking to her mom. And I'm like, is she trying to show me up in my own fucking house? I can't house? think of anything that would drive him crazier. <laughs> him in particular yo. would go fucking... She I think any man, any man would house. be like, yo, that's disrespectful. Yeah. You specifically is going to send you up to And I had a friend of mine there. I'm like... Is this woman disrespecting oh, yeah, yeah, me in yeah, front yeah, of my I hate friend? That, bro. I hate that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what was she talking to her mom about? Disrespecting me in front of my friend. Say what? What was, she, what was she talking to her mom about? I was probably fucking Salt Lake City houses of Utah. <laughs> it's wedding week. You gotta talk to your I mom. I know, yeah. You, where's nah, the, the, wait, where's the wedding happening? At the mom's house? Yeah. It's, yes, it's happening at the mom's house. Oh. Probably finding more ways to spend my goddamn money. <laughs> it's wedding <laughs> you know? week. Maybe wedding that's week. one of the conversations. She needs emotional support. Okay? That's what she does. She does need emotional support. But it doesn't matter. So I get in my head, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I started getting matters. in my head It was so stupid right And I'm like wait What's going on here Then I got this IV Because I'm trying to get uh, uh, Get, oh, yeah. get I mean, rid of this cold the, the I'm in the bed crazy. Locked up with the IV The IV was crazy Why'd oh, you need right. an IV Son because I got a wedding I got to get better I don't want to get y'all Sick Bro, Monday Tuesday You had the sniffles Son I did. I had a bad cold That shit was worse than COVID son <laughs> Literally I felt worse if Than that shit were, than If COVID. I gave you something else If I gave you the cold As you well did. as COVID You are dead You're Your a girl fucking, also had it so it could have been either one of us. I, yeah, but I'm going to blame you. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, it's more we're fun both, that way. We're both equally we're intimate We have a you. tradition. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking reverse smallpox yeah, blanket. <laughs> <laughs> this, is fucking, yeah, every, this is your gift that you yeah. give to me every year. I'm an Indian giver. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want from me? No, it's like, I felt guilty for about 20 seconds. So, and then I was like, well, this is not COVID. So, and I felt okay about your cold. Yeah. We're fine. So I got this fucking IV in my arm. I'm locked in. It does help you get over it to have an IV, though. It helps you get over it faster. It helps you get over yeah. it faster. I'm yeah. trying to get over it faster for y'all. So y'all don't get sick. <laughs> and y'all don't miss my wedding. I was with you the day you were sick. Yeah, but you you get sick a lot. Yo, so yo, that's uh, I'm looking out for you. You, you do. I've never been sick, sick though. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I've been sick. The most was... diva thing he said is, yo, man, I don't want to get the guy sick. Otherwise, they're going to miss my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> it's still yeah. for you. I've seen a dude How is it always that? still for yeah. you? I can't look like a loser. It's just my girls, <laughs> friends, and family at the goddamn wedding. You got a Sad. picture of me in the chair like I passed away? Yeah, <laughs> this is what Doug's wedding is going to look like when he becomes Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Get married at 75. None of his family show up to the fucking cathedral. Hey, you know what's crazy? (laughs) You're not even going to have a Jew officiate your own wedding. Ain't that crazy? That is crazy. Wow. What do you well, mean? That is fucking it's crazy. It's going to be a Christian because his shiks out wife or you're whatever. Christian, you're going to be a Christian. Christian. It is Muslim. what it is. All good Jews become Christian. <laughs> 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 Only the best. Okay. That's true. So I got this fucking IV in my arm and my nose is fucking dripping like crazy. Got that post nasal drip. Yeah. Oh, right? That's, dripping that's, all over my that's fucking a runny lips. That's That's not post nasal drip. What is it? Keep going. That's Man, just... I've been telling myself that's what that is this whole <laughs> week. I got that post nasal drip. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's literally what it is. You just got nasal drip, bro. Yeah. What's post? That's what it's in the back of your throat. Oh, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, 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 don't ever disrespect me talking like Nancy Reagan Damn. like that again, bro. <laughs> don't you ever disrespect me like that, okay? Yo. We're gonna get to Nancy in a little bit. Um, but <laughs> even though we're a few decades late, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but I, and I got the boogers dripping all over my mouth, and I'm yeah. just like, babe, can you grab me a tissue, right? She got her friend there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You need a paper towel for that thing. Or paper towel. Yeah, I need, yeah, I need yeah, a yeah, bath yeah, mat. A bath mat. Yeah, Man, can you get me the bath mat? So <laughs> I, I said, she don't fucking grab it for me. And I, now I'm in my head because I'm all fucking insecure. I'm like, is yeah, she just yeah. trying to find me? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And she got her friend there. Yeah. So I just scream it at the top of my lungs. <laughs> That'll help. 
with Monica, the nurse, right next to me. But she's in the room? Yeah. <laughs> she's just sitting there. They got to sit there for 30 minutes as the shit drips into your body. Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. Know that. So she's just in the middle of our passive aggression. <laughs> Babe! <laughs> can I have a tissue, please? <laughs> right? She's probably looking like you got a fucking nurse with you, dog. Yeah. She can't give you a napkin. The nurse is waddled in and she was just like, oh, I can get you anything. I was like, I have a wife. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> to be. To be. Yeah. <laughs> So I was feeling insecure about that shit. Yeah. And then she articulated to me, and this is about all the things that she does for me without me even asking. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just You're like. such a fucking retard. Yeah, I'm a retard. Hello. I'm a retard. I'm sharing this because there might be other retards out there like me. Oh they have to deal with you've this. You've been diagnosed? Yes. Oh, really? I've been diagnosed retard. Do we ever talk about this guy? Uh, not fucking yet. diagnosed retard. I want to get the diagnosis. Bro. Yeah. Alex in our meeting, Alex in our meeting where we have our comeback meeting, yeah. right? Yeah. Where we want to explain all our behavior and how we're going to be better. A family Alex moment. just opens up and goes, guys, um, turns out I'm retarded <laughs> and uh, no, autistic. Turns out I'm autistic. <laughs> Same and difference. That's why, you know, I do certain things wrong. The ultimate defense, though. No, 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 that wasn't my defense. What are you going to say? I'm just saying, I think I'm autistic. <laughs> yeah. I know in addition you, to my fuck I, up. He did say I, it after everything was like healed. And he was he like, did. by the way, guys, I'm a retard. Can yeah. I just say something that's very important to me right now? Yeah, say that. Is that if I go through life and treat everybody like they're autistic, it's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if you give everybody the expectations of autism, like sometimes I'll tell Alex an idea and he'll just look at me dead in the face. Like, <laughs> there you go. Literally, like your eyes have just spirals in them, yeah. right? And I'm just like, it's like The Incredibles too. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they're like, uh, oh, whatever yeah, they're yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe he's not a big fan of the idea. But if I if I go, no, Alex is retarded. Yeah, yeah. Then all of a sudden that makes more sense. Yeah. All, all That's this key time, to life. Son. All yeah. this time. That's key to life. It, yeah. it really does make everything easier. Yeah. You just assume everyone's like, all right, yeah. If they're, everyone's just going to let me down eventually. That's fine. Autism is for That's you. It. Yeah. Autism yeah. is a gift to you. Yeah. Brings out the best in you. It really Aren't does. you your best self when you're around an autistic person Absolutely. or a retarded person? Yeah, I love being around Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, point that I was trying to say is, I forgot. <laughs> oh, no, she does all these things for me, and she's been incredibly sweet and trying to do things before I even have to ask. Yep. And I wasn't crediting those things. Yeah. And I was like, man, you're right. Holy shit. And I can admit when I'm wrong. I was like, you're right. Holy shit, I need to be better at that. That's my bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we hugged up, loved up. So now we went from, like, bad... Date yeah, yeah. to like loving up hard, right. and then we're laughing and joking around, yeah, and having a great time. So yeah. they saw the whole fucking. The spectrum. waitress saw the whole shit, and then this bitch charged me sixty six hundred dollars for my meal. What? On yeah. accident, I assume. Oh, is it an accident? <laughs> oh, is it an accident? How you got sixty six hundred dollars? What are you eating, dog? That that could even be a reasonable receipt. Dude, it wasn't people. even close to that. Yeah. I tipped her sixty six dollars. Yeah. Somehow the whole meal became sixty six hundred. Oh. Well, how many Aperol How'd you find out? Uh, Amex gives Amex, you those updates yeah, on your phone. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, God. Yeah. I would have yeah. never even looked at it. Yeah. Oh, this bitch is Something's something up, else. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She done wrote that money in the bottom. Because if she thought it was 6600 <laughs> if she thought it was 6600 and she got tipped 66 she'd be fucking livid. Think about what a small percent of the total that is. That's less than 1%. She'd be like this cheap motherfucker, blah blah blah. But they do this shit hey, every hey, day. Call this bitch. <laughs> who, no, wait, wait. I called the rest. If we had to say, who do you think made the mistake here? This bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not no mistake. Yeah. She a cheating ass bitch. I gotta put my I'm money on to you, ho. I'm yep. my money. Whoever yeah. the fuck yeah. you yep. are. Yep. 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 Hey, yep. hey, bro. Hey, I'm let's ride you. on this fucking I'm restaurant. I'm with you. You and me. Now you did the calculator app, but did two hundred percent. That's what you did. I gave her six six dollar tip. I think the the meal was like three hundred forty four dollars or something like that. Yeah. Did it right. Three hundred eighty dollars. I don't know. So, Six six dollar tip. So two people. What are you guys? Yeah. 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 We got a fifty dollar espresso martini. Wow. We had to get over this fight somehow. <laughs> 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 the only way I know how is spending some goddamn money. Okay. I love you those. Pick me up. Hey, as I know Don you get, Julio, nineteen forty two. The best thing about growing up is just throwing money at a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like just don't, 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 can buy something. Just fucking leave it alone, please. Yes, how do you yes, think you yes. make that mistake? How do you make a season six hundred? Yeah. I didn't make a mistake. Nah, she made a mistake. She <laughs> is a fucking criminal. But how? Yeah, she's a criminal. She's how? a gold digging bitch. Yeah, the she is. That's why the she's waiter. single, probably. <laughs> what? That's probably why she's single. Yeah. How do you know she's single? I just want to make sure we're separating her from Andrew's fiance. Exactly. So that bitch single. <laughs> exactly. That's what happened. He put sixty six yep. in the total. This is retarded. Forgot to put the fucking right decimal now, point. Didn't put the period. Didn't put the period, and he thought 
Oh, this is a celebrity in you here. He's tipping me crazy. You missed the That's period. That's what happened. That's the only thing that makes sense. You missed the period. If it's the exact amount you tipped. This bitch thought it was 66. <laughs> she didn't see a comma. Where's the comma? She hey. saw the blue check. She hey, saw the bitch, blue check. She saw the, the blue. Comma. She saw the blue check. We don't sign his fucking blue check on his name yet. <laughs> they saw. Yeah. Son, with, son, with the she, Amex. Hey, like, she. Who's just arguing no that comma, comic, right? <laughs> no comma. And the total 6,600. What happened Sorry. to the original yeah, bill? Uh, Sorry, think happened? about it. Think I put the total. What happened to the original bill? What'd you put the total? You put the, the total at the bottom. You put the total at the bottom. Slut. Yeah. Slut. <laughs> did you? Slut. I did. I swear to God. Oh, okay, okay. I was right. She is a financial slut. So what happened mm. when you called the restaurant? I didn't call him. Yeah. I sent him an email. I sent him an email. An email? Yeah, I sent him an email. Yeah. They I email? called. They didn't pick up. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't either if I just stole five thousand dollars from somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right or six thousand. Yeah. She's yeah. having a great Christmas. Yeah, she <laughs> thought she was gonna have a good Christmas. <laughs> she, you thought yeah. you got yeah. sixty-six dollars, bitch. So Enjoy. now, what are, you, what are you gonna tip her then? Because now you can redo the tip, basically. Nah, nah. She gonna keep that sixty-six. She gonna keep that sixty-six, and then we'll just never, I. never go there ever again. <laughs> And then did you do a whole, like, you did a whole night? You went to a bunch of spots? Oh, yeah, yeah. We recreated our first date. Oh, that's, that's cool. so sweet. Yeah, we went to Veselka. Also, that's a great uh, trick that you guys should use yeah. if you never want to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't pay for anything. Once we told people, like, yeah, this is our first time. We were here for our first date. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And just yeah. free, free, free. Yeah, so we yeah. recreated our first date. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm the problem is you don't... Bad first dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You but go you got to be... Getting married, and that's what makes it special. People oh. love marriage. Well, you can dude. just tell people. I know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah. it's, I don't know. I never had this uh, feeling about marriage, uh, and I know there's a guy component to this. Of, of, I'm sure, yeah. but like, <laughs> yeah. you also don't believe in birthdays. So I also don't believe yeah, in birthdays. Yeah, you have some weird traditions. Yeah, I know. I, I believe in it. I know that it exists. I'm not like it's not like UFOs. Like I don't know. I'm not on the fence about birthdays. Like I know I've been here for 38 nah, birthdays. Our birthdays are like UFOs to you, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I just exist. don't think that we should celebrate you for something you had nothing to do with. You know, like I kind of agree, bro. <laughs> you had nothing to do with it. It was your parents. I should give your parents something. I should None give your of mom, us make a big deal. Your about mom our birthday. only. Yeah. I should just give your mom's only well, no, for my, what they did to push you down. My dad was a part of it. Barely for a little. A couple, Barely. A couple, a couple seconds. We don't even know. We don't even know. <laughs> oh. Have you been tested? That's a good point, actually. We don't even know. Yeah. Yo. We both got to get tested. Yeah. <laughs> Real we, talk. We, I got a friend, Kunal Aurora. He will never congratulate a man when he has a baby. He, and he will only congratulate the man whenever he gets engaged. Because he's like, the man did all the work to get engaged. The wife just stood up. Uh, got a ring. For a baby, the guy just nutted in a girl. You didn't do shit else. I'm, not, uh, I'm only congratulating the mom when you have kids. And I'm only congratulating the guy. When you get engaged, he's yeah. a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Two I mean, parents just had yeah, kids. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm gonna congratulate. I'm not gonna be a psychopath. The yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, just, <laughs> what do you know about pieces of shit, you retard? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you got emotions all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now now having spectrum. a kid is a big deal, yeah. Alex. Yeah. That would that. be rude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah, it was it was just a cool night. It was a very cool night. We got all emotional and it was really sweet and and uh, it was awesome. And people were treating you different now that you're about to get married. People just love marriage. Guys also? Like yeah, guys. they just treat it differently. I don't know. Like bartenders and that kind of stuff. They're just like, oh, this is awesome. They're really like excited by it. Yeah. And bartenders hear everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I don't know. They just were really, really sweet and like happy for Bartenders you. Bartenders probably hear a lot of shit they don't want to hear. Yeah. And then hearing two people are about to make the biggest commitment and like this is beautiful celebration. They're probably like, oh, that's so nice, dude. Yeah. What a relief from this other shit I got to hear. Every unemployed fuck coming in here <laughs> drinking away his problems. These guys are doing something beautiful. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. But it's a great thing, dude. And I'm telling you, these fights, you don't mind them because it's like, it is probably just we misunderstood each other. Like you were yeah. feeling sensitive because, and then she was like, hey, what about all the other stuff? And you're like, oh, my bad. That's yeah. going to be most fights from now on. It's great. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Are you going to treat people's weddings different now? Yeah, 100%. Wait, I actually? feel bad about every t wedding I ever missed. Really? I feel like genuinely bad. <laughs> actually? Because, yeah, it's like, um, I don't know. It just means a lot to me, everybody who's willing to come to my wedding. And, and I never thought that I would care like that. And the, the people who have made the effort, and it's like a big effort. It's an inconvenience. You know, and like mm -hmm. doing that to be there for a special day means a lot. So anybody who invites me to their wedding, if they're like a friend of mine, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to be there. Because yeah. I know what it's also like when people can't go and yeah. when they can't go for bullshit reasons. Yeah. yeah so. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because I got to make sure that you're making some goddamn money when you're gambling. OK, and you know how you make the most money when you gamble? Well, you have to gamble more money. 
And what if you could gamble more money without putting some of that money up yourself? Well, that's exactly what can happen in MyBookie.com. AG. Okay. MyBoogie.ag is matching your initial deposit bonus when you sign up and use our promo code flagrant. That's MyBoogie.ag, promo code flagrant. They're going to match your initial deposit bonus up to $1,000. Okay. Gamble on the fights, gamble on basketball, gamble on the NFL, gamble on whatever the fuck you want to gamble on. They have tons of different things that you can put your money up on, but just make sure you do it and get some of their money to gamble with too. Why would you not make more money for free? All you got to use is our promo code flagrant when you go to mybookie.ag. Good luck. You got this. Now let's get back to the show. Isn't it crazy? Schumacher was the greatest F1 driver like ever and it survived and then got in a fucking skiing accident and now he can't walk. He can't move. He's dead. He's dead. Not is he a vegetable? He can't move. I'm technically right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. We can still toboggan, at least. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, if you love skiing. Bobsled, yeah. but Jamaican bobsled That's what I'm team. Yeah. They're yeah. looking for people, probably. Yeah. There's always a silver lining. You were just bringing up F1. Yeah. Uh, did you see the race? No, I am not an F1 guy. I know you guys are, but it seems crazy. Please enlighten us, is what happened. Okay. So, Americans found, myself included, found F1 from this Netflix show, Drive to Survive. Correct. And they filmed this Netflix reality show after the season, mm-hmm. and everything's all said and done. You already know who fucking wins. You never yeah. know who wins every single race. And they still find a way to make this world incredibly interesting and compelling. Right. It's almost like, um, I don't even want to say it's Friday Night Lights because Friday Night Lights <laughs> was scripted. Like, you actually didn't know who won or not. Right. This, you know. Yeah. But they find the drama within the drama. It's like a really, I can't believe people like it. Like, it'd be like watching, like, the highlights from, like, the NBA playoffs afterwards. We mm-hmm. did. What, last, last dance? dance. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. But I guess. that took the greatest yeah. team ever. Yeah, and Michael like, Jordan, the greatest athlete ever. Yeah. So we're like, all right, I want to see what this is about. That's true. Yeah, and it was also like, uh, there's, like, nostalgia. Like, you're watching a Christmas story or something yeah, like that. Like, yeah, how yeah. do I relive those feelings that I had fucking two decades ago? True. Right? But where this is literally what happened three months ago. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. you know everything that happened. Right. Mm. And it's still so fucking good. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just so new to us. We're like, okay, I have to relive this. Mm -hmm. And I guess you get a little bit deeper into the drama, et cetera. So this season of Drive to Survive should be absolutely amazing. If they fumble this opportunity that they were given right now, then take the show off of Netflix. Mm -hmm. They're fucking idiots who are producing this show over there. It is quite possibly the best from everybody I've spoken to. And again, I'm late in the game. This is the best Formula One season that has existed in their, their lifetime. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's so like people come to yo. I've been watching since two thousand one. I never seen anything like this. Right. So maybe in this generation of racers. <laughs> okay, maybe if you're coming back to like Senna and those exactly. guys, it's a little right. different. But even then, maybe there wasn't the same level of drama. Obviously, those guys were dying and shit. It's crazy. Basically, uh, for for everybody who doesn't exactly know what's going on, the, the Formula One's not fair. Right. It's like baseball. Okay. Okay. So it's like kind of like unlimited budgets. It used to be more limited. And then every year they go, oh, then we're going to find a way to do like a salary cap kind of. But basically the, the teams that have a lot of money can throw money at the problem. Right. Okay. Like we we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Right. I mean, Mercedes might spend half a billion dollars on their team. Was it 300 to 500 million dollars? Okay. Wow, so the big money teams are Mercedes and Red Bull. Right. And uh, they also have like other teams and supply. Like Red Bull has a whole different team that's also Red Bull, hmm. Alpha Tauri, right? And Mercedes supplies engines to other teams. It's a really weird thing going right. on. Doesn't matter. Formula One's crazy. And uh, this year, Max Verstappen is the kind of like lead driver for Red Bull. And then Lewis Hamilton, who is the greatest of all time, won seven championships uh, with Mercedes. Right. He's going for his record eighth right. this year. Mm hmm. Red Bull comes on strong in the beginning of the season. Then Mercedes comes back. Going into the final race, yeah. they're tied in points. Whew. So whoever finishes higher, not even first. Whoever finishes higher right. wins. Okay. Right. The race happens. <laughs> Hamilton starts in second place. Okay. Max Verstappen is on, on pull, right? So he's okay. Hamilton gets the lead. Okay. Okay. He's left out there on, I think, what is it? Hard tires, right? So Mercedes makes a decision not to have him pit because Mm. he could lose placement. Right. Right? But the risk is he'll be on worse tires. Right. Right? He's in the lead. He's winning. He should win the race. The race is about to be over. I think there's four laps left. It's over. Lewis Hamilton won. He got his eighth. It's done. Mm. This guy, Latifi. Nicholas Latifi. Nicholas Latifi crashes with four laps left right okay now with a crash you have to remove the car from 
the track. Right. Okay. When you remove the car from the track, a caution car or a safety car goes and essentially leads all the cars. So it limits the speed that they can go. Nobody can pass, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four laps to go. Depending on how long it takes yeah. to get that crash car off the track, right. the race should end. Yeah. In other words, if it takes four laps, that's the order that the cars are in. That's how the race finishes. Yeah. Mm. Right? With one lap to go, they get the car off the track. So technically, they can race for one lap. Right. Now, Lewis is in first. Max is in second fifth, yeah. but he's in fifth in terms of position because there are cars that have been lapped okay those cars are called lappers <clears throat> right generally speaking i think when a caution car the car leading the group mm -hmm. is out they let all the lappers go around in this specific one they didn't think that they would have enough time to let the lappers go massey i think his name is michael massey makes a call this is the guy who like is the the, the race coordinator the person mm -hmm. who's making all the rules steward. all the day yeah. race steward is that what it's called okay he makes a decision to let the cars in between mm -hmm. lewis hamilton and max verstappen lap in other words go in front of the caution okay. car essentially getting them out of the way uh, so there shit. can be one lap left of racing but he doesn't let the other cars behind do it okay so he's basically just like move everybody out of the way there's one lap left for the championship, let them go. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Max is on the fresh tires. Yeah. He's on the, what are they called? Uh, soft tires. He's on soft uh, tires. Huge advantage. Right. Right? Remember, because uh, yeah. Mercedes made a strategic choice to keep Lewis on the field for a position. Right. Red Bull had nothing to lose. They brought him in. They put in the soft tires because they're like, listen, we're already five spots behind. The worst that can happen is we get second. And you can't pit when there's a safety car taking you. They did pit on the safety. Oh, and they said keep but Lewis, tires. But Mercedes didn't want to be as they might lose position. Okay. okay. So like, we'll just keep position. So it's the two of them. Now, I've heard different uh, viewpoints on this. One viewpoint I heard is this is like you're playing your buddy one-on-one -on -one, yeah. and it's a game to seven and you have six and he has zero and then... Somebody just goes, okay, next basket wins. Right. Exactly. And it's like, whoa, what do you mean next basket wins? Yeah. yeah. I got six. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? You just moved all the people out of the way. Now, would Max have passed all those other cars? Yes. But they would have caused uh, at least some, some kind of delay. Delay, just difficulty. Just passing them milliseconds, who knows? I assume it just, you got to move around them. And also keep in mind, in a, in a lap in this course and in most courses, there's only a couple places to pass. Right. It's oh. not like you could, right? You need enough okay. straightaway to develop speed. Yeah. Right? And a turn where you can come inside. Yeah. Mostly. So let's say there's only three places per lap to pass and there's two cars in between. Getting rid of those two. Yeah, so you're, you're fucked. You're yeah. fucked. If those two are in the way, you're fucked because you pass, you pass, race is over. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of those two gives you three opportunities to pass one guy. And I'm sure I'm fucking bumbling this and I'm getting certain things wrong, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, if you have any corrections of what I said, if there's super F1 fans out here, you know that I'm more or less learning about this now. But I think this is pretty much what exactly what happened. And so in that Max passes Lewis, first place wins. That seems Lewis got to take the L. Yeah, that seems fucked. Seems it unfair. seems fucked. Now, here's the thing. The sport's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not, we're okay with the unfair rules. And the second the unfair rules disadvantage the team that takes the most advantage of the unfair rules, they're upset. Mercedes spends hundreds of millions of dollars more than every other team to have advantages. Yeah. A rule is put in place that put them at a disadvantage. Not even a rule. A decision was put in place that put them yeah. at a disadvantage. And now they're whining and crying. They're not whining and crying about the fact that they could spend double every other team. Yeah. This shit ain't fair. Yeah. The sport's not meant to be fair. Mm. It's meant to be entertaining. Yeah. Right? And the rules are created so it's entertaining. Mm, that's interesting. Right? It's called the Constructor's Cup. We look at these things because we like athletes in America. Right. We're like, who's the Michael Jordan? Who's this? The way Formula One is looking at it is which team won? Mercedes still won. Right. They right. still won the Constructor's Cup. Mm -hmm. Max won his championship. Right. But Mercedes still had the best car. Right. And it's about the best car. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is, you could put a decent driver in a Mercedes. And he's a good driver. They're going to win. Okay. They had a guy from the worst team. I think it was Williams. Uh, Andrew Russell is his name? George Russell. George Russell. Who's getting 15, 16 place consistently in, in a Mercedes car, but not the car that's He's in a Williams car that has a Mercedes, Mercedes engine. He's in a Mercedes engine. Right? Okay. Races one race. When Lewis is out with COVID or something like that, 
races one race in a Mercedes, leads the whole race, is going to win the race, and all of a sudden something happened to his car. Right. Mm. Oh, shit. And I think what they did is they protected Lewis. Yeah. Because they're like, if this guy who's getting 16th place every single race all of a sudden pops into the Mercedes and then he can win it all. In one race. Ooh, that might tarnish Lewis's reputation. Right. Mm-hmm. How great is Lewis? Yeah. Right. Is he great or is he in the great car? Mm-hmm. And this shit is all about the car. When you're at the upper levels of driving, of course. Mm-hmm. If we're already looking at the top 1% of drivers. Mm-hmm. Right. You put in like a new QB on a team. You're like, oh, is it the system or is it the QB? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a system. Yeah. And the QB can take it there. Yeah. But a system is. Right. I think you're bothered as a fan from a distance. It would seem like I'd be bothered just because it's like, all right, well, these are the two best companies. Like you said, these are the two best car constructors. Yeah. So at this point, let me at least make that as even as possible. Sure, eighth place could be in first place if they had more money. But first and second, which is what we all want to see, let's make that as even as possible. Yeah. Let's not fucking eliminate cars and give them another advantage. When they already got the same financial, we can blow everybody out the water. Yeah. Well, let's just see them go at it fairly then. Yeah. As fair as it can be. Yeah. It seems like that fuck with that. That's why I'd be bothered. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Is it standard for them to remove the cars um, during that? Yeah. Safety. Oh, that's a standard. Yeah, that happens it, all the they time. have to be. Because if it's just there during the rest of the race, you no, 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 not the fucking. No, the I'm talking about the lappers. Is that was that a standard move every race that they would remove the lappers? Yeah, but I thought I think because that what they do is they let everybody pass. Yeah, it was, and they only let the lappers that were in between Lewis and Max. Yeah, so if they're doing something just for this race, it, it feels, it's unfair. Yeah. yeah, but the guy said it because the guy Total Wolf, who's the uh, the, the basically the head of Mercedes. Yeah. He goes, he goes, what the hell are you doing? And then uh, the guy, Michael Massey, who's the steward, just goes, we came here to race today. Hmm. That was, <laughs> because all co- these team principals have been saying, let them race, let them race. And Mercedes, just because of their influence, has gotten a lot of favorable decisions this season. Yeah. In, pr- in particular uh, to uh, Lewis on Max. And uh, this is something that... Hey. So if you're a real fan, you're also probably satisfied. Like, fuck you, you finally got a taste Everyone should just say, like, this was great for the sport. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it was that unbelievable. Was unbelievable. Does also, Hamilton benefit on the back end that the sport is now getting more eyeballs? Yeah, of course. Of course. Like, 100%. how mad is he really? Like, obviously, it affects his legacy and money. But, like, oh, this next season is going to be insane. I'm sure he wanted eight. Yeah. yeah. Like, you want to be Very the guy that has the record. If he has right. eight, and they have one a, over Schumacher, Schumacher, but he has the win for most races, uh, record for most uh, races won. Yeah, so he right. has one record. And him and Verstappen have a bitter rivalry, right? Big Not rivalry. even. Like, Verstappen's a new up and coming driver. Yeah. Like, Lewis has been, it'd be like, it'd be like uh, Jordan and Kobe having a rivalry. Yeah. But, like, in but the they moment. They didn't have they, a bitter rivalry. Okay. I because, thought in the moment they were talking a lot of shit about each other this year. No, no Lewis is pretty mentory to to him. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. This okay. season's just been a battle, but in the last couple seasons, and I realized something with the Netflix show, to your point, it's not even for us anymore. It's for the people that are going to say, listen to this podcast and say, I'm going to try out Formula One. Yeah. Start it off by watching the oh, Netflix doc. It's by the time, Then you'll be watching the next season you'll be obsessed. in real time and you'll be obsessed. I, mm. I've got, I got through almost the first season and then I wasn't obsessed. It was definitely a good show. Yeah. But they talk about Verstappen in, in season one. You can basically, if you watch a show, I've realized, watch his whole arc from yeah. like kind of brash punk kid that's got a lot of talent into now winning the fucking thing, yeah. which would be very cool if you go through all of it. Oh, this next season is going to be fucking ridiculous. And hey, what yeah. was Lewis Hamilton's reaction? Like everything I'm Googling is basically he was just like he didn't show up to the press conference. Yeah, he's upset. You know, I'm yeah. sure maybe he thinks it's unfair, but you could also say that Mercedes was pussy. Like they didn't play to win. Like mm. they were like, oh, they're just going to drive this out, and then we're just going to take the safety car to the finish line. They could have, they could have given up position, but prepared themselves just in case. And Lewis you know, and smartly the was like the the couple times where he thought he should have boxed or or pitted to change tires. His team, like strategy wise, they played it safe. No, let's leave you on those tires. They're durable. Yeah. They'll go the distance. But he was smart enough, and it's. Partic- a couple particular moments to say like uh, why am i not boxing why am i not going mm. in there so uh you can chalk it up to their strategy uh was off but he was a gentleman in the moment his dad was shaking hands with max's dad like it, he did well i thought yeah. in terms of that yeah well this would be a chance if he wins next year to make this a big asterisk like you can kind of undercut the whole win i assume if you win next year yeah. If you win next year and you could be like the only reason i don't have nine straight is this fucking bs decision yeah yeah you can make his Verstappen's championship, uh, Astros championship, basically. An interesting wrinkle to the whole yeah. race was that 
Max Verstappen had won more races mm -hmm. throughout the year. Okay. Nine to Lewis's eight. So he was given the tiebreaker in the event that they would end that race with the same amount of points. Right. Now, how could they end a race with the same amount of points? Well, they would if neither of them won any points. Right. How would they do that? Let's uh, say they crashed. Right? So if Max wanted to win, yeah. just crash. Yeah. And I think I was watching a documentary. Was it Senna? I forget exactly who it is. I was watching a documentary about a guy who did this and basically like on the first turn crashed into his rival and then took the both of them out. Jeez up, dude. But that's it. That's guarantees yeah. the victory. So if Max wanted it that bad, yeah. he could have easily like driven really aggressively, pushed right. Lewis off the side. He crashed as well. Game over. Mm. Yeah. He got it. So it was in the bag for him. Mm -hmm. If he wants. Right. Now, that's not maybe the right way to win it, but people have won it in that way before. Yeah. Mm. Wow. What would y'all have done? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it almost feels similar to the time when like we were in St. Louis and you won the first race and then I beat both you and Alex immediately in the next two races. By crashing us. By having an aggressive uh, maneuver uh, and then had the fastest lap overall of the week. I'm pretty sure. Is it similar to that, you think? I, I don't recall. It I just remember way. you being incredibly aggressive and like driving very dangerously. I don't yeah. think it was and dangerous. crashing me. No, no, no. Because yeah. what, what did the what did I, the race I remember him doing like research before to learn how <laughs> oh, to yeah, drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so cool. Still lost like yeah, multiple no, times. I got, I got him with my, my pit, what is it, my pit boss? My, you got him with your pit boss? <laughs> yeah, I got him with the pit boss and he said I was, yeah, he just gave me strategy. He gave you the soft tires. Yeah, I had soft tires going you guys into riding the, on the, the final race. Ah, yeah. we were riding the hard. Do you think it's issue. similar to that or not? <laughs> I think it's basically the exact same. Okay. The exact same thing <laughs> gotcha. as that. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second because federal student loans have been on hold. And come January 31st, when the CARES Act payment hold expires, you'll be back to paying your federal student loans. Today's sponsor, Ernest, can help you. But make sure you review the CARES Act disclosures carefully before refinancing, okay? Ernest is the number one student loan refinancer in the country. They earn the top spot by helping thousands of people get better rates, lower their monthly payments, or by helping their customers combine multiple loans into a single monthly payment. And Ernest doesn't charge any fees ever, not even late fees. When you pay less interest, you can put that money towards your goals, which is what you need to do. So right now, Ernest is offering our listeners a $100 cash bonus. Refinance your student debt at earnest.com slash flagrant. And remember, this is not available in all states. Once again, you get a $100 cash bonus when you visit earnest.com slash flagrant to refinance your student loan. Visit earnest.com slash flagrant. For more details, not available in all states, terms and conditions do apply. Earnest Student Loan Refinancing, made by Earnest Operations, LLC, NMLS, number 1204917, California Financing Law, license number 6054788535, Mission Street, San Francisco, California, 94105. Visit earnest.com slash licenses for a full list of licenses. Now let's get back to the show. Anyway, what else, boys? What else? What are you thinking about? What are we thinking well, about? Uh, since we talked about Netflix yes. and why Drive to Survive is amazing, do you want to talk about why you like HBO better? Okay. It's not that I like HBO better. They just are better. They are better. They're better at scripted and it's not even a fucking, it's not even close. And not only are they better at making the scripted shows, they're better at getting people to watch the scripted shows. Okay. Okay. This weekend, fucking uh, uh, Sex, and Sex and the City comes yeah. out with their older Sex and the City. I did not even know it came out. Nobody knew it was coming out. Yeah. There was no interest. No, no. Girls didn't said. give a fuck about it. They're like, I don't need to watch these girls anymore. I saw them go to fucking Dubai or whatever like that and walking around with masks all day long. I don't need to see this shit again. And the one character that everybody knew about was gone. Samantha. The most entertaining character. Maybe yeah. not the one you love the most. Probably it's Carrie or each one of these girls has their own thing. But undeniably the funniest, most entertaining one, the one that got fucked all the time, great tits for her age, is off the <laughs> show. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, okay, why the hell would I watch this shit right. if now they're old? I don't care about their lives. The one that was the funniest and the most entertaining is no longer there. Like, what? What is the it point? Seems of like this? just a bunch of Madonnas just fucking in their sixties, <laughs> trying just to be complaining. Cute. Yeah, get that shit over with, bro. Okay. Within a fucking day, every girl's watching this thing. They're locked in and obsessed. Within a fucking day, what did they do? They killed off one of the main characters. They killed off Carrie's fucking love interest yeah. mm -hmm. for the whole. Regular show. Mm. Big. You know that show? The mm -hmm. guy Big? Uh, yeah, I know of him. Uh, Christopher Noth. Yeah. I okay. think he's the character. They killed that motherfucker off. 
And this is how you know this shit has a big fucking uh, reaction, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, I was talking about how this wasn't uh, as big a reaction oh, as just st- in my I'll girl's life. On I'll stand on this. Okay, <laughs> ready? Um, big dies after using a Peloton. Mr. He has a heart Mr. attack. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Biggs. Mr. Big. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Big. Right. <laughs> dies after using a Peloton. Peloton stock dips 11%. That's okay. fucking crazy. Eleven percent. You might have also contributed to that. You have That's to take- Bitcoin shitting itself. Like when Bitcoin dips five percent, people are like, "Oh fuck, is Bitcoin yeah. on a down?" Yeah. Ten percent. Yeah. They saw the video. You, they saw the video of you falling off, and they were like, "Yeah, yeah." That, yes. that contributed to two or three percent. I started this. At least. I started <laughs> <At> this. Least. <laughs> the reason HBO is great is because I'm great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because, I'm complimenting me. Yes, that's what I mean. We understand First marketing over here. Big, then it was Mr. Big Nose. Yeah. 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 This is yeah. what it is. Okay, so listen. So the the fucking effect of this is crazy, right? Yeah. To kill off a main character and the love interests of this woman, actually, it's really the smartest thing because in order Brilliant. for us to like the show, she can't be happy. Bro, that's Game of Thrones. You gotta have stakes. <laughs> yeah. Opening season, you're like, the two coolest guys are dead? Dead! Yeah. What happened? And they keep on killing the motherfuckers you love. If you love yeah. them too much, that motherfucker gonna die. And they've yeah. been married because they, they got married in a movie, I believe. Yeah. First or second, I don't know. Yeah. But they've been married 10, 11 years. Mm-hmm. That's not fun. Who wants to see that show? No. There's no stakes there. Also, you we gotta need to be single. We need to follow Carrie's journey, which is in podcasting now. The takeover. Hey. So fuck, oh. what the fuck we do. G's you know what up, I mean? She's up. Uh huh. So it's like, in order to recreate that world and in order to follow this woman through that world, trying to find out what her life is going to be, what love is going to be, you need to remove the love. Yeah. Right? If you already got a man, you're happy, you're in a nice house, then you're flying to fucking Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Right? It's like they literally had nothing else to do. So yeah. they flew them to fucking Abu Dhabi. Right? I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Everybody talking about it. main character dies, or one of the main character dies, main love interest dies. Now all of a sudden my girl's locked in watching, and then the writing is funny. I'm watching the show and I'm like, this is funny. Yeah. I remember thinking it was funny before. The storylines get you in. I'm like, you fucking did it. Mm. HBO fucking does it every single time. Mayor of Easttown, right? Yeah. Mayor of Easttown comes I like down. That show. The fucking finale, all of a sudden the stream goes down. Uh, I didn't start watching this show until after the finale when the stream went down. Mm. The stream going down causes national news. Right. Everybody going, what the fuck you mean? The stream? It's trending on Twitter. The mayor of Easttown is trending. Why are people so upset they can't watch the show? It must be a good show. Yeah. The show's fucking great. I go, I watch it. Yeah. White Lotus, The Undoing. It's like nonstop. They keep coming with banger after banger scripted show. Can y'all name a scripted show that Netflix has put out in the last year that people are obsessed with? Scripted. The I Kevin mean, Hart shit. A lot. Squid Game. Squid Game. Squid Game. Kevin you gotta, you Hart. Give it up, Squid Game. Got to uh, give it up. Squid Game took over. Ozark. Okay. Nah, that fell off. Uh, <laughs> you want me to listen? You, to hits of the HBO? heat of Ozark isn't the same as it, it was. It fell off. Two it was ago. fire when it first started. That fell off. I, I gave think, up season. Two. I think Squid Game is massive. Yeah. That's the biggest. House of and Cards. And then True Story. True Story. True Story is is mid. I think it's mid. It's, yeah, it's, but you, um, it's highly what they got shows. What's that one? Narcos Clickbait is, or something? It's good. Narcos. I think people stop watching Narcos. You, you're, you is big in terms of just yeah. eyeballs. Yeah, you is big in terms of eyeballs. You're you're also talking critical yeah, acclaim. That's I what think. I'm saying. Like Undoing was very well received critically, and people watched it. Uh, Mayor of East Town, same. But like, what's that fucking show with Entourage that has the Entourage guy in it, Vinny? Clickbait or some shit like that. Oh, yeah. 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 That that was, people, Kick it wasn't a good big. show. <laughs> Buddy, um, people watched it. You think it. more people watched Mayor of Easttown? people watched it. You think Mayor of East Town, Town? Those were limited series. Easier to get superstar creators and, and talents. Right, Clickbait had Vinny Chase. They don't have their Game of Thrones yet. They don't have their Sopranos. They don't they have, have their they Curb. Have the Witcher. They don't have The Wire. Ain't nobody watching The Witcher. Like they got the all Witcher. these shows. <laughs> yeah, like, but- Squid Game. Squid Game was a breakout show. Yeah. I mean, like it, it had that like a uh, Tiger King effect, right? Yeah. It was like mainstream. People are locked in. If you didn't watch it, you had the FOMO, right? There's this. There's this. Uh, I think we've talked about it on a podcast before, but like there's a trajectory with content. And it's not just with a show. It could be with a movie. It could be with a tour. It could be anything. There's a director where it's like, you're in on this thing early. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're in on this thing and sharing it with people. And then it hits a critical mass where if you haven't watched it, you feel weird. Yeah. You're the outsider. The only show that that happened with that I can remember in recent uh, past with Netflix is Squid Game. A little Stranger bit things. with True Story. A little bit of truth. And Bridgerton. Also Bridgerton. I was just about Bridgerton. to say Bridgerton. That was Bridgerton. huge. Everybody was talking about that. A few years ago. But I had minimal FOMO, H- but yes, they were talking HBO about it. I mean, it wasn't too, for us. 
Tons of misses. That's what I'm saying. HBO has Tons Gossip Girl, which was a dud. Tons of misses. You're yeah. talking about uh, oh, yeah. Casa de Papel, but you're also talking Netflix has local market producers. Everywhere. They have hundreds of more executives trying to find oh, the development I, for I'm this. I'm just comparing budgets here. Like the budget for HBO and the budget for Netflix. Yeah, you have to bring that point in because yeah. Netflix can throw money uh, at everything. HBO's okay. got everything a, probably a higher hit No, but Squid yeah, Game, so Squid they Game have, was a very low the budget. Batting, the batting, batting average, average is crazy. Is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, Cause, that I'll give you. Because yeah. they can't miss. Like it was, remember when AMC back in the day went on that string of nonstop bangers? Yeah. Like AMC. Mad Men and Breaking Bad. Bang, and, bang. Uh, and then Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Mad yeah. Men, Breaking yeah. Bad, Walking Dead. Yeah. There was another one that came out on AMC as well that people were fucking with. Like, I think was Turncoat or something that? like that. Shield like, was FX. FX. But like, it was just a, after another. And you're like, holy shit, does this channel actually the truth? And they made it relevant. Yeah. Yeah. It and was relative unbelievable. to their budget. That's a crazy run. Unbelievable. So for HBO, yeah, that makes sense. That's why I'm saying they're so great. Is it they will spend $30 million on a fucking pilot for a Game of Thrones prequel, not the one that's coming out, but another one. And if it's not good, scrap it. Yeah. Mm. Light $30 million in the air because they know. They're like, this isn't it. You know what it's kind of like? I remember hearing Walmart and Target started off as competitors, and then Walmart was so good at being cheaper that Target was like, we can't do what they can do. We can't compete with cheap shit. Mm. So let's just make stuff that's nicer than what Walmart yeah. makes yeah. and charge more. That's like Trader Joe's, too. Trader Joe's might have done shit. that. It's mm. like they don't have any of the selection, but all their shit slaps. It's bangers. Yeah. 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 And Trader Joe's is cheap, but Target was like, look, we're going to be more selective of what we have. And I think that might be what HBO is doing. Like, look, we're not Netflix and just throw money at everything and have options for every single human being on earth. Yeah. They have the budget. We don't. We have to be more selective with ours and make it more appealing, like especially critically. And and I just have to say, like the way that that HBO does their marketing, I don't know if they're aware of it or not, but the way that they do their marketing is just fucking genius. Like they're able to like stir up controversy around their shows, which creates that FOMO effect where you're like, why is everybody upset? Like right now the, there's this whole thing going on with succession. I don't watch succession. I don't care about like billionaire fucking problems. Is that problems. HBO also? But yeah. like everybody's talking about that. Shit. Oh yeah. It's a cultural that, moment. Yeah. And like there was something with one of the characters, Jeremy strong mm -hmm. was being criticized and Aaron Sorkin felt like he had to do a public oh, apology, yeah. but he yeah. doesn't have social media. So he put it on Jessica Chastain's social media. And it's just like, just that type of conversation piece swirling around a show. Yeah. You're like, well, what the fuck is happening in this mm. show? Netflix doesn't seem to have that apparatus where they can get all this controversy churning. Like they have tons of data and they can push stuff to you algorithmically, but they're not creating the conversation outside of it. Like, dude, Mr. Beast doing the squid game thing. Yeah. Th that's what you need. Yeah, now yeah, you're not yeah. going to get that every time, but like, how can you get the conversation churning outside? Yeah, that's what a comedy special does. Yeah, that's yeah. Dave Chappelle drove people to Netflix because of the controversy. Yeah, I feel yeah. like Netflix strategy is like just put all the budget into just making content. Yeah, yeah. buy everything. Yeah, fuck. Even when we did the thing, they were like, "Yeah, we don't do billboards. Like what we what we do is just use the algorithm to push it to the people that are going to see it." Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's like okay, but like fuck a billboard. Let's use some money to, you know, create some drama. Mm. Yeah. Like, let's create some conversation yeah. around the piece that's going to drive people to the piece. And I think that's what fucking HBO does. When, when they put out the Peloton ad, I believe wholeheartedly that this was part of the deal. Oh, yeah. Can you explain that? Okay. Mm. So basically, Peloton yeah. stock dr uh, drops 10% or 11% yeah. after uh, the uh, Mr. Big dies going on the Peloton. Yeah. Right? Gets a heart attack. I think, personally... Okay, so then an advertisement comes out very Peloton, soon after Peloton. a Peloton ad very, with Christopher Knopf being healthy. I guess we could play it. Yeah, you want to check it out? Yeah, play it right now. If you're listening... To new beginnings. To new beginnings. You look great. Well, I feel great. Should we take another ride? Life's too short not to. <laughs> and just like that, the world was reminded that regular cycling stimulates and improves your heart, lungs, and circulation, reducing your risk of cardiovascular diseases. Cycling strengthens your heart muscles, lowers resting pulse, and reduces blood fat levels. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> so good. Ryan Reynolds <laughs> does the voiceover. Does the voiceover. It's Mr. Big and an Asian chick or Mexican girl. I'm not and she exactly might be sure. an instructor for Peloton, right? Oh, yeah, she's she? a famous yeah. Peloton instructor. Uh, yeah. She was the one I think he was watching in the show. 
Uh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Extremely well coordinated and orchestrated. Well, this is extremely yes. quickly. You know yes. what's crazy? That's crazy. Let, me just, is, let me just yeah. say this. So, so I think this is another HBO move. Yeah. I think if HBO is going to make it look like you get fucking heart attacks going on Pelotons to a key demographic that uses fucking Peloton. Yeah, it's a leverage point. It is like literally who are the people who use Peloton? Fucking people Joe who watch Biden. Sex in the City. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Sex in the City people, girls who watch Sex in the City, and maybe their boyfriends and or husbands comedians. like me. And some comedians. Some sometimes. comedians yeah, yeah. get stuck under them. Yeah, trying to look good for their wedding. That's maybe. it. That maybe. might be part of the demographic. That's a possibility. I went back on it. I'm no bitch. Yeah, I saw you. <laughs> okay, cool. listen, I'm like big. Yeah. <laughs> did you run extra hard to stomp it Fuck on yeah, it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I almost fell trevor. filming that video. No. 100%. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm done with this shit. But my point is, I I bet you they reach out to Peloton and they're like, listen, we're going to do this. It's going to cause a controversy. I don't know what's going to happen, but why don't you have something really fun cooked up to go along with it? They must have notified the brand. I don't even know if you can use a brand without well, their permission. Now, here's the crazy thing. I'll, I'll, I have to potentially push back. What Peloton was already working with Ryan Reynolds' uh, creative agency. He's got a marketing firm. He's genius yeah, yeah, for yeah, this yeah, shit, yeah. right? And they apparently cooked this up. They were already working with them, and this was like a 48-hour, we got to do something fix because... Otherwise, I don't think Peloton would risk having that. No one would approve the risk that you could drop that much with uh, your stock price. For HBO to even mention Peloton in their show? They got the approval to use it, but someone from Peloton may not have read the script. Yeah, right. No, I think they got the yeah, approval. Yeah, right. And stuff. they said, yeah, we'll, we'll do it, but we're going we're to have something ready we're to gonna go. We're going to cast that. And HBO might have even helped them out. Here, we're going to do this shit. Here, we'll help you. We'll help you create an ad. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And they might not even help them create the ad. They just told them more or less what's going to happen. Right. And again, you're not going to give less, away yeah, the script. Yeah, yeah. More or less what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's going to be some some tragedy after the use of the Peloton, whatever like that. Just want to let you guys know, you guys do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay? And getting the Christopher Knopf character to yeah. go film that, like that's even a little bit peculiar. Yeah. Right? Like you're undermining the show. Now, Christopher Knopf is aware that his character is dead, not he is dead. Yeah. But he's basically going, I didn't really die. I'm out here and I'm with the instructor and I just wanted to leave Carrie. Yeah. You're kind of undermining the plot of the show. So I think there has to be some sort of communication between both of them. Hey, you're going to make it look like our brand gives heart attacks, but we're going to make it look like your show isn't real. Let's have some fun. We're fucking talking about it on our podcast right now. Yes. Yeah. This is what None of HBO us have seen a second of this show. Yeah. I have a little bit. This is okay. pretty fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. I laughed. Right. I laughed out loud. See, you times. brought this up. You're like, yeah, we should check this out. And I was like, all right, is this story that big? I kind of felt like out. I was like, really? Is it, is it that big? And then I came home and I see my girl on the couch. She's kind of crying a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what's, what's wrong? What happened? She was yep. like, Mr. Big Die. Yep. Oh, get yep. the fuck yep. out of yep. here. Yep. Right? Yep. Wow. Oh, and I it's so, it. and dude, there's a scene. I can't believe I'm talking about it. Yeah. But there's a scene at the funeral <laughs> where like people saying. are coming to the funeral <laughs> and like, th it's really interesting. Like the, I didn't realize how like purposely uh, overacted that I forgot how overacted the actors are on Sex in the City. Mm. It's almost like drag. Mm. <laughs> like funny. each actor is a is kind of a drag queen. They're this mm. like exaggerated, overacted version of themselves, but because they're unaware of it, it's just kind of funny. Okay. And like mm. if you watch the episodes back, you'll kind of see it. Like everybody comes in almost like Kramer. They're like flustered and ready to go. And yeah. I'm gonna talk like this. And right. hello. It's literally a drag <laughs> show. The whole mm. thing is drag. Yeah. yeah. Except for Carrie. She's kind of like the one who's holding it all together. She's the Jerry. She's the Jerry. <laughs> yeah, she's the Jerry. Um, but can act. Yeah. And and it's actually funny. What? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I forgot what I was saying that. What was I saying? That? <laughs> it's like drag. Everyone's overacting. No, before this, it was... The uh, funeral scene. Oh, the funeral scene was like a really cl uh, clever premise. It was... Uh, every uh, these people coming in and making the funeral about themselves. Oh yeah. yeah. So instead of coming up to like uh, grieve with Carrie, they're like, "Oh, when my husband died, uh, yeah, sorry. I remember what it was like when my and like everybody kind of making it about themselves mm, when yeah. you're, it's your fucking it's a funny funeral. Device, yeah. We do know that's the entire ethos of Seinfeld, right? What's that? They're the four most selfish people that are friends, but everything they make about themselves. No hugging, no learning. Yeah, I don't know. I never watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know that. I thought the show about nothing. <laughs> so go, give us your book report. I'm fucking <laughs> sorry. Fucking, you give us a book dork. report on sex in you the city. Yeah, At least there's some you. pussy. At least there's some pussy. All right, guys, we had a break for a second because I got to tell you my favorite part of this time of year. My favorite part of this time of year is food. 
Okay, I can never get enough of how amazing everything smells. And speaking of smells, I have to tell you about Native's awesome new holiday inspired scented products. Okay, Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're all about stopping the stink the right way. That's the Native difference. You've heard me talk about Native's legendary aluminum free deodorant. Native's mission is to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by creating products that are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil. Oil, so you can smell great all day with classics and rotating seasonals native has a scent for everyone try their holiday scented deodorant body wash or toothpaste in scents like candy cane sugar cookie and fresh mistletoe for a limited time they sent me the sugar cookie smells amazing i love it love it deodorant or deodorant. Body wash? oh yeah be putting it on it smells great every time God bless you, man. I love to hear you're doing that. Stay merry, happy, and fresh this holiday season. You will love Native's limited time seasonal products as much as I do. Go to nativedo.com slash flagrant. Okay, that is N-A-T-I-V-E-D-E-O dot com slash flagrant. Or use the promo code flagrant at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash flagrant. Or use the promo code flagrant at checkout for 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah, we need to start our own sex in the city. We can't. Why? Because we have everything that they want. What do you mean? Yeah, that's true. That's true. What do you yeah, mean? There's this like search for a partner. <laughs> now the whole show yeah. is like, how yeah. do these like old women get married? Yeah, stuff? the show's about sex, and we're a bunch of married guys. So what do we know about sex? That's what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're, just, we're gonna call it virgins of the suburbs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just move out to Long Island. <laughs> we're like, can I get a fucking hand job, please? <laughs> What's a guy gotta do? <laughs> Baby, I'm getting a massage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta make our own man. show. It's gonna be how sick. do you get laid? Yeah, how do you get laid by your wife? Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys had less sex or more sex since you got married? Well, don't ask me. <laughs> I've had a lot more. Yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah the whole yeah, abstinence yeah. thing really yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of fucks up the game. You yeah. know what I mean? And you? Probably less. Probably less? <laughs> probably <laughs> less. Really? Yeah. yeah, I'm gone more, so that definitely contributes. Yeah. But probably <laughs> less. You think that's the reason? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I tell myself. Because yeah. I'm on the road so much. Yeah. That's what I tell myself, yeah. 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 One of us is being faithful when I'm on the road. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But noticeably less to the point where you're like, oh, I see what married people were talking about. Not yet, but I can I can see it trending that way. Really? <laughs> Five years. Dude, after kids, I'm like, are we really going to be doing this after kids? You think that you'll just stop <laughs> having sex yeah. in life? Dude, I'm going to be oh, in my 40s. Funny. I'm going to be in my 40s. She's going to be a mom. I'm not into <laughs> MILF porn, guys. This is not me. We should do that thing. So you know how some people do no nut November. Yeah. I was thinking we should do. You have to nut every day. Yeah, you brought this up. That's a so, crazy idea. Yeah, wow. I will lose immediately. No, no, no. You yeah. don't necessarily have to fuck. It's the opposite of you could jerk yeah. off, but you just have to nut every single day. Yeah, and then the first person to break it. Like, There's a great Seinfeld episode. They do <laughs> that's the opposite. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the, the contest. Yeah, I know, yeah. You know. the master of our own domains. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you guys are talking about. That's just the funniest yeah, great episode we all get to have. Yeah, no, what is that, it about? What's the episode about? Yeah, you say, I don't you even explain it to this guy. They're He's going to shit all over sex? you. They're not uh, <laughs> masturbating. You say, you're saying those, uh, oh, they just stop masturbating. Yeah. yeah. Who can go the longest? Without masturbating. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think... <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Kramer Sounds sees a hot girl fun. through a window, disappears, and then he comes back like five minutes later and he goes, I'm out. Yeah, he just throws money on the That's how they end the scene. It's really funny. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, good. so good, dude. Hilarious. Greatest show of all time. Hey, tell Hilarious. us more about that funeral scene in Second Hilarious. City. <laughs> that, that, shit is fun. that shit is fucking fun. <laughs> no, but um but yeah, you know the tough thing about like shitting on Seinfeld the show is I love Larry. Yeah. yeah. So I can't really shit on like when you guys say these ideas of the show, I want to shit all over them, <laughs> but I know they're Larry's. Mm. So I, I'm being a liar. Yeah. <laughs> like if yeah. I, if Larry was pitching that to me. Yeah. And oh, he's great. like, yeah, yeah, we just great. won't jerk off. I'd be like, oh, this is brilliant. But if like if Seinfeld was, <laughs> I'd be like, would you really write a joke about this? Like, or would that be too filthy for you? Why don't we use oh, a different word? Yeah. Well, what if we did it on maybe, stage? What yeah. If we did maybe it? jerking Can I tell off you would something? be too, 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 too strong. Can language. I tell you something? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. didn't use the word. Yeah. Made it that much better. Of course they did. They did. No, they didn't. They never said what it was. What did they say? It was an FCC guideline. Yeah, but yeah. it worked better. Master yeah. of their own domain. They used like a bunch of euphemisms and it made it way funnier. Yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> but Larry, but Larry came up with it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, if Larry yeah. came up with it, that's guys, fire. That changes, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Notice Larry went right to fucking HBO. He's like, I want to curse. I want to talk about oh, sex. Yeah, I want to yeah, do it. Yeah. I'm done with this guy who's making fucking B movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm over it. This guy's making fucking cartoons. <laughs> that one stung. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do some feelings, no facts. Mark, talk right. to us. Greatest UFC journalist of all time. Self-proclaimed. Yes. Not self-proclaimed. The people proclaim me the greatest UFC mm. journalist of all oh, time. The people's journalist. I am oh. the people's journalist. I thought you said it first. No, He's the people's journalist. The, people people the people's greatest journalist of all time. The people's greatest UFC journalist of all time. Yeah, oh, okay, I'm the it. greatest journalist of the UFC of all time. <laughs> and <laughs> MMA. It's not just UFC, it's MMA. Of all, uh, of all time. Of all time. All fighting sports ever. Ask me anything about UFC, I'll tell you right now. Did you watch the fights? Yes. And what'd you think? That was phenomenal. I predicted this. I told you a man in noons would get fucking knocked out or man choked out. People get mad because you keep on saying noons when it's Nunez. You don't even know how to say it. How do you pronounce it? In noons. Por in Portuguese? Noons. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to sound a little bit more retarded. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But no, I predicted this was going to happen. Okay. Juliana Pena, just beast. Mm. Beast. Went what what beast. did you know? Why why did you know she was going to she win? believes in herself. She believes she could do anything. Okay. Yeah. The world is her oyster. Okay. All right. And she also has great teeth. Okay. Got it. And that's how you knew great teeth. I just knew it, dude. I fucking Actually, that's a knew good point. It. If you're a fighter with great teeth, you're probably a good fighter. You probably really, I hit. mean, it's just the Venezuelan vixen, bro. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, this is Venezuela. Like, mm. these people already produce the hottest women on the planet, and mm. there's no food. Mm -hmm. You start feeding these women? Mm -hmm. They could do anything. Yeah. They already produce fat ass, big tits, beautiful face, beautiful body. Preach. No food. Eating cardboard. Natural, right? Oh, shit. And then you start giving them real nutrients? American nutrients. Chicago right. shit. Cheese, meat, mm. bread. Uh. Unstoppable. Unstoppable force. <laughs> it's an unstoppable force. Mm. A Venezuelan with food cannot be stopped. That's a good ass. What did you actually think of the fight though? You thought it was like. I thought it was so entertaining. It was fucking fight unbelievable. Of the night? Um, yeah, I think it was Friday night because of. of the, I think it should have been Friday night just because of the sheer upset. Mm. Like it was mm. unbelievable. Yeah. It was so incredible to see. Like Amanda Nunes is Nunes is <laughs> uh it was so if you were watching the latest fights, like so incredibly dominant. Like yeah. she touches you, you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And she touched Pena and she walked through it, kept yeah. punching through it. She was not scared. She called her shot. She'd been calling her out for a while. She said exactly what she was gonna do, and then she fucking did it. Mm. And when you do that stuff, it is just so impressive. So God yeah. bless her, man. And Man, that was just so fucking awesome. Were really you a little awesome. bummed to see the end of the era? No. And I'm not saying you that she can't come back. Over? Yeah. Like, I think she can come back, and she just has to be a little bit more. She got into a firefight. Another thing was it was really interesting. We were talking to uh, Ben Askren about this. And grappling cardio is different than boxing cardio. Okay. So, and you saw the same thing happen in the sec, in the uh, in the other co-main event mm -hmm. with uh, Oliveira and uh, Poirier. But Amanda, when she's on her feet, this great striker... Like, she can go for days, striking, has all this power. But what happened? She got caught in a grapple with Pena. And that grappling cardio, Askren said, is different. How right? so? Like, guys who have a huge, super long gas tank, all of a sudden they're on the ground, right. and they're grappling, either jujitsu or wrestling, mm. and it just tires them the yeah. fuck mm. out, right? Mm. You saw guys that can go forever just get absolutely, thoroughly fucking exhausted. And mm. I guess it just requires a different, uh, I don't know, maybe it just requires different type of uh, muscle usage mm -hmm. and because of that you gas quicker right i don't know like a guy like ben Askren, you look at his body you're like no nah, this guy doesn't have great cardio right. i bet that guy can wrestle for days a guy like dc you look at his body you're like oh this guy probably doesn't have a great cardio right. but that guy can wrestle for fucking days right mm -hmm. right so it is a different ball game and i think that's going to be a, a skill that's going to be utilized to uh minimalize the effect of these strikers. Mm -hmm. I think we're about to be like in a new evolution of, of MMA. Ah. Like the, the sport just keeps evolving. It's crazy. Because you saw in the second fight, uh, or in the second co-main event, Poirier Oliveira, I don't know if you guys saw it. Did you guys I watch? I did not. I was oh, chill. You watched. So it's like, once, the, for like basically the whole, what was it? Second round? I think yeah. it was like a whole second round that uh, Oliveira got Dustin on the ground and just kind of stood over him. And then Dustin was just kind of like holding on because he didn't want to, in the middle of the octagon, give potentially give up his back right. or do something sneaky that could because Oliveira is so good at jujitsu. Yeah. Right. So he's like, I'm basically just going to hold and get fucking pounded on for the whole round. 
and then they'll stop it and we're back on the feed. I'll get back to business. But that shit taxes you, gasses you. He came back in the third. He was fucking gassed. Mm. Right? Like, yeah. look, you even saw it with, remember when Izzy fought uh, Jan Blahovich? Yeah, yeah. And right? And Jan just on stayed him. on top of him. Just he wasn't even him. trying to really score. Mm. But he was like, as long as we're not on our feet, yeah. this guy doesn't have an advantage over me. And Izzy looked gassed. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Right? And now it's different. He's coming up 20 fucking pounds, yeah. fighting a guy who weighs much more than him, and a guy who's just leaning on him the whole time. Right. But I'd be interested to see what he has to say. Mm. Like, does he think that grappling actually taxes him in a different way? Izzy's been kickboxing since a fucking. What eighteen or something yeah. like that? He won't get tired on. He's not gonna. You'll never see him get tired throwing strikes. Yeah. yeah, like just when he in that fight with Gastelum. Do you remember fifth round? Mm -hmm. I'm prepared to die. Yeah, when he says it, just swinging for yeah. the fences. Fifth round. So it's like there's something about that cardio that's different. Hmm. I mean, you even saw it like Connor. Anybody who goes up against Khabib, once Khabib, Khabib starts holding you, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wrap. Something's different about that cardio. Yeah. So that might be a good strategy used for the strikers. And I wonder if we're about to be in this new era where like uh, one of the earlier eras was these jujitsu guys came and they started fucking tapping these people out. Right. And if you didn't have any skill with jujitsu, once someone grabbed you, it was over. Yep. Mm. They just tangle you up and then find a way to tweak some part of your body or get that fucking neck and then it's done. Yeah. And then what happened is the strikers started learning enough jujitsu or wrestling in order to combat the grappling right. and then keep it on the feet. Right. Or these guys that were like wrestlers were able to keep the jujitsu guys away from them enough and then developed enough striking where they could have an advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we had this cool era where it was like the strikers were starting to dominate that had good wrestling backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Right. It was like these wrestlers that learned really good striking. Mm -hmm. Right. And I wonder now if we're starting to get into this era where it's like those jujitsu guys, it was kind of like been forgotten almost. Yeah. If these jujitsu guys started to get good enough at striking where their striking was elite like this Charles Oliveira guy like right. he can bang with you he can go he, he can, can go with you he can throw but if it goes to the grounds be careful right because when Dustin and Oliveira were swinging on each other when they yeah. were standing up and striking yeah. Dustin was winning those exchanges right but Dustin knew if this guy gets my back or if he holds me or anything there's nothing I can do right mm. And it's a really good advantage. It's like what happened with Nate Diaz every single fight. Like Nate Diaz could get clipped, go to the ground. You can't go to the ground with him mm -hmm. if your jujitsu isn't good. Right. You can't. Like you could try to ground and pound him, but if he if he locks you up, mm -hmm. now you're giving him the advantage. Yeah. Right. It's like what Connor would say: <clears throat> just get up. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It's like I have a bet. I'm. I would rather let you get up and recover yeah. than be on the ground and be in a dangerous oh, position. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I can so, out strike you. Let's go. There it is. So like I, Oliveira is like even more dangerous with the jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if it's it's this kind of new era where these jujitsu guys mm -hmm. finally got elite at striking, and now everybody's gonna have to get their jujitsu up. Yeah. Because you can't just defend now. Because right. when you're on your feet, you don't have the same advantage you used to have. Mm. Yeah. Did you watch the Sean O'Malley fight? Yes. Bro, I love watching him. He's great. He's just so fun. He's great. And I think Joe brought up an interesting thing about O'Malley, which was. He's like, they're bringing him up in the same way they bring up boxers. Yeah, they're okay. doing a great job. Yeah, and usually, actually what I admire about the UFC is they don't usually do this. Mm -hmm. Is by the time you're ready to be in the UFC, they figure like you're one of the best fighters and then we can throw you in with the Wolves. Right. Maybe give you one fight to see where you are, but then eventually we're just going to basically sink or swim with you. Right. And the UFC is such an amazing promotional outlet because they have all the fighters signed. It doesn't matter if you lose. We're going to fight you again. Yeah. We decide who fights. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they literally would just be like, hey, we think you're pretty good. We're going to put you in with a guy who has a fucking name. If yeah. you beat him, you're going to skyrocket. Right. If you don't, we'll see what happens with you. Yeah. And that's also a risk you can take when you're not paying the guys these crazy numbers. Yeah. If you have, if you have a fighter that's under a contract where he gets $5 million a fight, you better make sure he wins. Right. You got to be ready. It's too much invested. You? Why yeah. would you make him uh, fight some really tough wrestling guy that could yeah. potentially hold him down? Not and an now, interesting fight, get him injured. Like, yeah. The model, I know it sounds crazy and like I'm capping for the UFC, but the model, the pay structure creates more entertaining fights, right. incentivizes the entertainment because everybody wants to get the bonuses and allows you to take fights and lose and keep fighting. Right. The structure, at least. But the threshold, they got to be making enough to compensate. Right. What get I punch think. In the head. Uh, yes, don't get me wrong. And I don't know what those numbers are, so I have to figure out what That's those numbers are. That's what I'd are. like to know. Yeah. But what I hope is that these people, like Sean O'Malley, learn how to make enough money outside of the sport with the fame that they're getting from it where yeah. they can where they can produce real money. It's like, I'm not crying that YouTube is not paying me more money. Right. I'm literally creating, we're literally creating hours and hours of content 
for them to put advertising on. And we get a fraction of those advertisers. But right. you know what we did? We went and got our own advertisers. Right. Yeah. Now, if the UFC becomes like NCAA yep. and limits their ability to get sponsorship and all this other then stuff and starves out the guy, that's fucked up. But if they're like, yo, do your thing. Go teach some seminars here. Do classes there. Content here. Blah, blah, blah. Advertise for this guy. Be their sponsor. Use the yeah. stardom but to like, create money. I, I just want to fight, though. I just want to fight. Hey, that, the that's game like, has changed. That's like comics. They go, I just want to go up. Oh, yeah, I that's just want to tell jokes. That's cute. Do you? No shit. We all do. Yeah. You want to tell jokes for a living? Well, you yeah. might have to do a couple more fucking things. Yeah. Don't be a dinosaur. But if you're a part of a promotion, like they should be able to hook it up. Like if you're a comic, you're just out there on your own, not signed. There are some that are able to do that. Mm -hmm. They just won't reach the same heights. You can do that. Right. But if you want to find a way to make money, and please believe the bigger your star gets outside of it, the more you command inside of it. Yeah. So it's just this. If you're doing it right, it's this whole self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, which right. to me is Sean's leverage is that like they just see him as a star. They're like, yes. yeah, he's down to play ball. Like he knows how to like get people to watch. He's good at pressers. Like his hair is dyed. Like he knows how to get attention. So let's build him up, give him all the fights that he needs, and then put him in like the big money fights. And and he's if I'm him, I'm not mad at it because I'm like, shit, I don't want to risk. I want to take a risk making no money. Right. I'll yeah. take the risk when I'm making the real money. When I re-sign my new contract and right. I'm getting five times more than I am for each one of these fights, yeah. I I would love to fight the top five right. yeah. and right. potentially lose. I'll potentially lose for millions. Yeah, but you want to be 15 and 0. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so you said they're bringing him up like a boxer because they're giving him easy fights right now? That's what it seems like, right? Yeah, they're they're not throwing him in with the Wolves, which is like traditionally what a lot of times UFC, UFC will do. Usually do. Take your yeah. losses, oh, who gives a fuck? I mean, yeah. if you look at this guy like Michael Chandler, who they who they signed, right? Like, the, his first few fights in the UFC have been just fucking savages. Hmm. I think his first fight was against Dan Hangman, right? Yeah. Shouts to Dan. Love Dan. And uh, he was the guy that came to the Las Vegas show mm -hmm. and was yeah, saying that this on stage. Just right, an yeah. absolute savage, Right. Then his next fight is against um, Charles Oliveira, mm. right? Yeah. Who is the title holder. And then his last fight was against Justin Gaethje. Mm. Yeah. It's just yeah. savages. Oh, right. wow. Savage after savage after yeah. savage. So it's like they're down to play ball, but they don't have anything to lose because they're like, all right, if we believe in this guy, we'll keep giving him shots. And if he keeps fucking up these shots, then we can cut him. Right. Mm. Yeah. And like people might not like the pay structure, but they cannot deny that the product is phenomenal and we just have to look at how much of that has to do with the pay structure yeah. right also this is not to say that o'malley's fights were easy like i don't think like they were maybe like they weren't objectively like the hardest but like his fight against chris matino was like i guess not it was that easy one. for him not that one but like the other yeah. fights that he's had like, i mean his fight against cheeto vera wasn't easy and cheeto right. vera won yeah, and true. that was a big step up in competition and then so they brought it back down a little bit yeah mm. and i think but if i'm him i'm not mad at that I'm like, I, yo, no, I would not be at all. Pay me. If you're gonna pay me 20 grand for a fight or whatever the fuck it is, then I'm fight a 20 grand fighter. And I'm gonna pick them apart and entertain and do all these things yeah. with very little risk. You gotta pay me for risk. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like pay me to get fucked up. Exactly. Like anybody's gonna fight a midget mm -hmm. for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Like there's no risk. Yeah. Right. But ten thousand dollars to fight rampage. Mm -hmm. You think it's an indication to other fighters, like, yo, I gotta come in with something else to like offer value to the promotion so that they have an incentive to want to build me up. I think it's a kid who grew up on the internet and understands the game mm. and understands the successful people and how this shit works. You know what I mean? You saw he came out to the six, nine song. Yeah. I saw like that unreleased, like leaked six, nine track. Oh, I thought I it was a, that. I didn't know it was a unreleased track. Yeah, I, I thought it was, came out yet. Oh, wow. I thought it was just whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I got six, nine tattoo. I mean, it's like, to be honest, it's the same way as like any comic that's either doing comedy now or coming into comedy is they're going to see the way that we've done it and they're going to do that exact same thing this is just how you succeed in the this game this is what right? it is now so mm -hmm. it's like you're going to go oh, okay wow what is Schultz and his boys doing okay this is it this is how comedy is done now mm -hmm. and that's just what it is so if you're a young fighter coming up you're going to be probably on TikTok. You're going to be on YouTube. You're going to be podcasting and going on podcasting. The Nelk boys tell you to come out. You're going to fucking come hang out. Yeah. And I know there's motherfuckers out there that just want to get in the gym and bang. And that's cool. You're just not going to make as much money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. You, it might take you longer because you're not offering external value to the promotion. Yeah. yeah. And listen, the reality is, is like 99% of people just aren't good enough to be champion. Yeah. But some of you could be entertaining enough to get a shot. Yeah. If you're doing anything live, you got to sell tickets, and it's hard to do that with just skill. 
Yeah. You Comedy's need some personality. To People need to be yeah. attached to you, man. And that's another thing for Sean is that he has a personality. And that's the thing with the UFC. Personalities yeah. thrive. Yeah. So it's like you don't even have to win. But if you have an engaging personality and a really good fight style, yeah. you'll keep fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be a fucking commentator. Like they take <laughs> care of the guys that do good work for the business. Like there's one thing like it, you don't have to be the guy who's 20 and 0 to be one of the commentators. Yeah. You just got to be interesting, articulate enough. Right. And an engaging personality that people want to see. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. I'm a type of person that's like, yo, let me seize the opportunity. Like, you got guys like guys who would be journeymen in boxing making millions of dollars in the UFC. Mm. Like Cerrone. Oh, yeah. With yeah. his record, people would call him a journeyman as a boxer. Right. But in MMA, he was a fucking star. Nate Diaz is a superstar. Yeah. yeah. Superstar. Masvidal, right. superstar. Masvidal is a superstar. It's like, if I'm, if I'm not the best fighter in the gym, I'm looking at the UFC. I'm like, how do I get in? Yeah. I don't care. Like, just yeah. let me get in, get one crazy knockout. Yeah. You're it, with, it, with the UFC, you are one crazy knockout away <laughs> from a massive fight. Yeah. Mm, that's true. Yeah. So, and it's the other guys that like, when you're the best, you don't really need it as much. You know what I mean? Like Kamaru, like he doesn't have to be doing all the antics and all the crazy shit. And he'll make less money because of it. You think yeah. He, yeah. But he's already the champ. He's the best. I know, but it doesn't matter. He needs to fight people. He needs to fight people that will bring those antics. Like yeah, his yeah. payday is going to come when he's fighting Colby and Colby's going to sauce it up. His payday is going to come. He's going to fight Masvidal. Masvidal is going to spice it up and be on all the pots. Hmm. You know what I mean? Kamaru is in the gym. He's working and he's the best and he's undeniable. It is what it is. That's the fact. But people are trying to get into a fight with him. Hundred percent. The belt. If he just has the belt forever, he'll just make all the money from all the other people doing. Sure, but, he, but people won't care to see him lose it or win it if they don't personally value him. But they might care about his opponent. So now he's opponent dependent because. Whereas you, Floyd, you're be a lot of people wanted yeah. to watch Floyd lose just because they hated him. Yeah, I mean, he you're was, foolish he was to think that people just care about greatness because casuals don't care about greatness. Casuals care about personality, mm -hmm. right? Like we know that even from our game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like the casual is out there for the person that they've engaged with and that they love and for whatever reason they connect with. And that might have nothing to do with how great they are at the sport. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have to rely on the casuals really loving or hating his opponent yep. in order for him to make the most money. And that's fine, too, because he's got the leverage since he got the belt. Them casual, them, them characters, those personality-driven fighters need to fight him in order to get the belt. Right. That's but my he, point. As long as he's got the belt, then he's fine. He's got, exactly. And I think he's going to have the belt for a while because he's unbelievable. Absolutely. But still, his biggest payday will not come from another guy who's also really skilled that deserves a fight. It yep. will come from a guy who's got personality and people gravitate to. Yeah. Like, if he fights Nate Diaz, people are going to tune into that fight because they love Nate Diaz. Mm -hmm. And then the people who are actually students of the game and really care are going to be like, oh my God, Kamaru Usman is the best that's doing it right now. Right. I need to see him fight. But the way you make the real money is when my girl is interested in a fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When Akash goes, we got to watch. Yeah. yeah. Like if Connor fights, Akash going to watch it. I'm going to watch. Kamar versus <laughs> Jay Paul. We got to set it up. Yo, <laughs> I would be in. You'd be in. Yeah, I'd be and, in. And we like Kamar. And we Jake had Paul would have been the, the personality. Yeah. But Jake, Jake is going to bring somebody to it. <laughs> so it's like, honestly, if I'm Kamar, I'm just fighting motherfuckers that people hate if I want to be the hero. Mm. Like, who who do people hate the most in the UFC? But it's got to be close enough. It can't just be bums that are crazy. I don't think at this point it matters. I would think if he's just destroying lower-level opponents, people would be like, oh, he's just fighting bums. I think you get to a level of dominance where it's like, if you're just knocking all these motherfuckers out, you might as well knock the person out that I don't like. <coughs> yeah. You know, like, if I think you're crazy to think that people wouldn't watch a Jake Paul MMA fight against Kumar. I mean, yeah, that's right. insane. But I think people are tuning in that want to see Jake lose. That's all I'm saying. As yeah. long as they want to see somebody win or lose, yeah. not skill displayed. Right. That's for the people who love it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. What That's else we got? Jesse Smollett. Oh, yeah. He's him? guilty, right? Oh, yeah. I think the big story here is Black Lives Matter LA or Black Lives Matter posting that they still can't so, side with the Chicago Police Department. Yeah, they still support Jesse, and he's been a vocal uh, advocate and... He's been out front, and then they will. We can never side with the Chicago PD. We yeah. can never side with any police department, especially not Chicago. And they bring up a lot of fucked up history, but that got nothing to do with this. The yeah. recent history is this motherfucker made up a hate crime. And I, I think they miscalculated because the public perception 
is, yo, I'm dumb done with Black Lives Matter. Bro. Seems that's what I'm seeing. You saw Carlos's tweet? Carlos's tweet, yeah. When Carlos Miller is tweeting that kind of shit, you know you fucked up Brandon-wise. If bro. you are black and Carlos Miller's outwardly saying, you f- I don't fuck with you, you're you fucked. What'd he say? He's like, uh, they stole all that money and did nothing for us. Yeah. I'm going to remember that or something. Like, or remember that. Something like that. Yeah, remember that. Black Lives Matter stole all that money and nothing's changed. Yeah. Whew. And I even saw an opinion piece in, uh, I think it was Newsweek, written from, maybe he's a professor emeritus or something at Brooklyn College. We know Newsweek to be fairly liberal, probably. Yeah. Definitely professors I know to be fairly liberal. And he was like, Black Lives Matter really missed a mark with this. Not just defending Jesse Smollett, but like, I, I forget the other thing they said. Oh, he's like, this guy's guilty of a crime. And the fact that you can defend that is crazy. Hmm. And to see a white professor in Brooklyn publicly say that. Yeah. You just discredit your whole platform and you make it so emotional. So now it looks like all of your all of your facts or arguments are based on that emotion and yeah. we can't be taken like because people do things that are wrong. Yeah. Right. Like you just have to be willing to admit that. Like mm-hmm. if there's somebody from your community that you want to support does something wrong, you have to be able to hold them accountable so that people can trust that your your decision making, if you're gonna be a leader, yeah, that your decision making is on point. Yeah. Like to come out and say, listen, this is really fucked up what you did, and you discredit the plight of black people in America by doing things like this because there are so many instances of racism that happen. Yep. And now those can potentially be discredited by you faking this thing. And you can use the same examples you use like Fred Hampton to say, these are people who actually had, you discredit them as well. Yeah. Because now people who do get mistreated by the police department, you're going to look at them a little bit more skeptically. We don't support what he did. That's all you got to do. That's it. It sounds like they're just riding for their boy though. Fuck that, bro. But that's like the Chris Cuomo thing we were talking about last week. You're not nah, family. Uh, yeah, You're not okay. family. And you, Chris Cuomo is a news guy who's helping his friend and he's shading the lines of what ethical journalism is. You are an advocacy group. Your entire purpose is to change and help. Mm-hmm. Chris Cuomo is an entertainer. Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter is outwardly the most morally righteous. Mm-hmm. We are trying to help our people at all costs. And then all the little whispers that we would kind of be like, it's weird a little bit that they say, like, I want to justify or I want to abolish the nuclear family and this and that. All of that you can point to now and justifiably be like, these people are out of their minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you You're can't giving even... ammunition to your opposition. Yes. But it seems like they're just not trying to, they don't really care about consistency. They're just like, we're siding with whatever the black cause is. And that's no why you lose credibility. Police, go with, but they, they could have chose to not say anything. That's the yeah, other thing. Sure. You could just be silent. You could like, not say anything. You could say we side on, we are on the side of justice. And there is constantly injustice done to our people. However, in this case, justice is not with him. Mm-hmm. That's the really like, oh, that's, if they did that, I'd be like, that's dope. Good yeah. for them. Yeah. But yeah. now I don't trust it. Fuck, bro, Carlos Miller, not a guy that's going to tweet this. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say it to me on a private text. Mm-hmm. He tweeted that shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I guess I've never really seen them. I've just always seen them on the side of like black empowerment. And mm-hmm. like, I've never really seen them on like the side of. Even empowerment stuff. should not blindly support everything, no matter how wrong it is. Yeah. I don't disagree. But yeah. to me, it's not like super that's, unexpected. That's anymore. like um, pitying, that's like coddling. Yeah. That's yeah. not empowering at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked about this before. Like, I think the most effective thing, if BLM wanted to get white people on board, is show all the police brutality that against police white have people. done against white people. Yeah. And be like, yo, we're all in this together against fucked up policing and systemic racism. Like, let's yeah. all get together. Yep. But they don't do that. Well, because then that would be an all lives matter argument. Yeah. Right. And they'd have to. Yeah, they'd have to admit that all lives matter. <laughs> And their thing is a sole focus on black people and the black plight in America. Right. But that but would be I very effective at getting be, them yeah. to their goal. Yeah. But clearly there's not a lot of like logic or reasoning at the head of this movement, or at least the one in, uh, is it specifically Los Angeles or is it According to TMZ, I'm reading here, it says BLM and BLM LA released a statement before the verdict in support of the Empire actor. Yeah, this is a shame. So, but it seems to me like they're just calculating. They're like, yeah, we just are going to fuck with black people no matter what. No matter what the truth is, no matter what, it doesn't matter. Whatever black people are doing, we fuck with that. Yeah, you just discredit the whole brand. What do you yeah. think, Al? Yeah, I, I'm not for that. It's like even people from my community, if you're doing wrong, you call it out. Yeah. Because that's how you improve your community. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, stay sense. silent. Yeah. And I would probably stay silent for family. And I think for friends, uh, I'd be like, nah, bro, it's fucking wild. Yeah. Especially yeah. if I am an advocacy group. Mm. If you're asking me if one of y'all fucks up, I'm going to be like, I, I'm riding with my boy. Mm. But I am never an advocate. Yeah. I'm the I'm the last advocate. How do you listen to and take the advice of a group that is 
admitting to you. They're willing to just lie or overlook the truth. Yeah. To support the people that have supported them. Mm. Like, I, like, how do you actually have like a serious conversation with a politician? Like you're walking into a room and they're just looking at you and they're like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think Cosby did it. <laughs> right? You're just like, wait, what? It just like, feels like bad faith. And right? I'll tell you yeah, what. Like, how, like how, can I take anything else serious that you say out of your and mouth? I'll, by doing this, by supporting Jesse, Jesse Smollett, Black Lives Matter, the organization. It's QAnon. They're QAnon. They have done the biggest <laughs> they disservice. They QAnon. They did. And they have done the biggest disservice to Black Lives Matter, the movement. Because now whenever somebody tweets hashtag Black Lives Matter, you're not going to associate it with the fact that black people are being killed by cops disproportionately. This is fucked up. Right. Systemic racism, all that. You're going to, you have the exit ramp of oh you know what that's an organization that won't even fucking call out their own I don't give a fuck about that right. yeah. you look ridiculous having a Black Lives Matter hashtag you have an mm. off ramp that's great yeah. you just yeah. dismiss you, you're ticket. able to dismiss that. the whole thing yeah you just yeah. dismiss it we just need the exit ramp I say on ticket all the time I need the exit ramp for caring mm. that's yeah. it right there now they have they have done more to undercut the Black Lives Matter movement than anything they did before that to help it yeah Interesting. yeah that's arguable but that's yeah. a feeling I, I they definitely did a lot to hurt it yeah you're well, not tweeting Black Lives Matter right now. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. agree with that. You think it alienates even like a liberal white people that are on board with them? Hmm. Like, it's, in my opinion, conservatives are already alienated from them from a year yeah, ago. Yeah, I think it yeah. makes it a little bit harder for liberal whites now. Definitely the moderates. Mm -hmm. Moderates are looking at it now, and they're not going to be educated enough, a lot of them, to separate the movement from the organization. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, oh, this organization, this whole movement is just, it's just gone, it's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. What you else? You want to talk about Pat McAfee getting the Yo, hundred twenty million shouts. dollar bag? Shout out mm. to Pat McAfee, man. Pat, Pat, Pat. Congratulations, huge duel, duel, huge, deal, huge <laughs> deal with fan yeah. duel, fan fan duel. duel. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Huge deal. Um, looking like thirty M's a year, I think. Thirty M's a year for four years, so one hundred twenty million total. Wow. Now he's got to pay out everybody from that, but that's one hundred twenty million dollars. I mean, that's big time. Crazy. And the guy deserves it. I he's mean, a beast. he is. He is like, he's the perfect combination. It's like, you always want an athlete to be talking about sports. Yeah. There's something about an athlete talking about sports. It just seems, it's credibility, yeah. right? But um, he's also someone who would have been able to do this even if he wasn't an athlete. Yes. He's that good at it. Yes. So it's really great to be that good at and have the credibility of being an athlete. It's like, I got to go here first. And if you're a player, I imagine you want to talk to a guy who's been in the league 100%. a little bit. 100%. He gets, even if you look at punters like they're not a part of it. First they of were all, there, B. First of all, he was there. Second of all, his co-host is A.J. Hawk, who was a linebacker for the Packers. Right. First round pick. This guy knows what the fuck is up. Yeah. So he's just brilliantly done. It's dude. just great to see, man. It's yeah. just great to see they built that thing and just him and his team. Just bravo, bravo. I didn't know that they were doing it every day of the week. It's five days a week, dude. Five days a week. So good for him. But I, it's just awesome. I love to see this. I love to see somebody build something on their own, something that they're passionate about, and then be able to make life-changing, uh, I mean, generational wealth. Dude, the it. craziest thing, this is a Spotify deal without Spotify. Yeah. Usually it's a Spotify deal or a so whatever company deal, and your podcast has to move exclusively there. Yeah. This is just a sponsorship from FanDuel, who already sponsored him. And from what I've heard, I heard little bits of the show. Betting is intimately, it's a part of the show. And they will shout out FanDuel and they will push yeah. it. But FanDuel is like, we just want to keep you. Do everything else the same. Have it yeah. on all the platforms. We're giving you $30 million a year to just keep doing you. Mm. Yeah. Do all your other ads, I assume. Because they, they do have other sponsorships. I, Liquid Death is a sponsor. I can't imagine FanDuel being like, you, you can't have water sponsors. Why would they give a fuck? Maybe. That's a that'd be an interesting thing to look into. He's also a cool dude. He donated like three million dollars. He donated six million of it. Oh, six million. Yeah. At yeah. the beginning it was just three million, but now he's up to six million just to like his local wow. high school, like uh, children's hospitals, like uh, yeah. athletic teams that needed money. Like he's just supporting his communities oh, that he grew fire. up in and lived in. Wow. That's fine. Uh, yeah. I wish I had sent you the tweet, but uh, it was sad to see Dave Portnoy tweeted some real like kind of snarky shit. What is that? Basically, he said like. He kind of was like, I gave Pat this playbook. I taught him how to get bet on sports. And like, without me, there is no, without me and Barstool, there is no Pat McAfee, which is true. Pat McAfee started on Barstool, but they left on good terms. Pat was basically just like, yo, I'm working in Indianapolis. I'm not moving to New York. Things are getting lost in translation. I need to be on my own. And then built this thing into something fucking crazy. And Dave could have just been like, yo, it's good to see one of our own doing it. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he was just kind of snarky about the whole thing. And then Pat, to his credit, all about positivity, was just like, hey, thanks for the, you know, thanks for the first shot, boss, or whatever, on moving forward or whatever. Like, he mm. just said something nice back, but it was just kind of disappointing. Yeah. Like, Dave, you're good, dog. Yeah. yeah. And Pat's always been a nice dude. I knew him back when I was working in Indianapolis. Oh, really? Yeah. So mm. I was at Bob and Tom where, like, Pat kind of started, or at least in my opinion, started, like, a lot of his broadcasting stuff. Mm. Is that Bob and Tom was a local radio show in Indianapolis, and he was, like, the biggest local celebrity. So they would have him on all the time. Hmm. And so he would come on, and he was, like, doing stand-up at the same time. I saw him, like, do his first few, like, headlining sets, huh. like, at Morty's in Indianapolis. And after the show, was, like, I was just a kid, and I would, like, go and hang out. I was probably, like, 18 at the time. And he was like super friendly, like would just sat me down, like was talking to me, like at like the after party thing, and like the bar. Great, dude. He like played soccer, and he was like, "Bro, you played soccer? I did ODP growing up." Like he was just like a super nice dude. I ended up like tweeting him. I was like, "Dude, great meeting you." Like hit me back. He was like, "Yeah, man." That's like, so dope. Stay, uh, that's stay in touch. Like he was always a nice dude. And I'm pretty that's sure he fire. retired early to do Barstool. Like really? I don't think Barstool was that big when he went there either. He was just like, he saw the opportunity, he saw where he fit in, he's, you know, why, he had like a couple of knee surgeries, I think he was in bad shape physically yeah. to be a punter, but he, was, he had a good contract, it was yeah. 14 million, and then he walked away from it and then went to Barstool. Oh, Not shit. that year, but that was the total contract. How much was, oh, total. Yeah, I think yeah, he had yeah. a few million left on it, but he just walked away from it and said, I'm going to do this thing, and now he built it into, he gets paid like an NFL quarterback now. How crazy is that yeah, to make more great. money being a broadcaster than you do playing the sport you're broadcasting not only yeah. yeah you make more money than anyone on your team made wow i doubt quarterbacks are making 30 million a year and retired yeah that's true wow it's fucking wild dude yeah good for him yeah man. good for him man shouts to pat we need you on the podcast pat 100 percent. next time you in new york you gotta pull up yeah man. no zoom come through <laughs> yeah yeah pull the fuck up all right feelings no facts yeah. some nyc sanitation workers have salaries approaching three hundred thousand dollars a year due that to staffing issues. Is get it, boy. Get crazy. it. Crazy. Get it in. That's insane. Get ba it basically in. Basically, they have such understaffed people that they have guys working overtime, and yeah. they can make up to three hundred. This one dude made one hundred seventy thousand working overtime. Yeah, 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 that's more time with garbage, fam. Yeah, <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> like pay them everything, bro. Yeah, like and they got good benefits. Like they get time and a half. All yeah. you can yeah. eat. <laughs> oh, that's a fact, bro. They got that's leftovers old, for that's days, old dog. Street jokes. Y'all don't know that joke? No. Yeah, that's an old joke. Five hundred dollars a week and all you can eat. That was the old. That was the old. You probably heard that yeah, back yeah, in the yeah. But um, damn, yeah, man. I mean, you're picking up fucking garbage, dude. That garbage juice all over you. Like, also, you gotta. Like, there's a stigma to like being a garbage man. Yeah. That's true. A little bit. Not like, anymore, though. If a dude comes up to you at a bar, he's like, yeah, I'm a garbage man. You're like, okay. Yeah, usually right. they'd be there. Now, you <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. But like, I'm in sanitation. It's like, <laughs> you almost got to like say you're in the mafia so that people don't think you're <laughs> yeah, actual yeah, 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 garbage yeah, yeah. collector, you know? Yeah, how do you say that to a girl? You're at a bar, like she asks you, what do you do? Sanita sanitation. You can't say sanitation. I work they, for the city. What do I you work do? for the city. Yeah. My department of sanitation. Yeah. What do you do there? I pick the bags up and throw it in the back of the truck. Yeah. Yeah, what what date can you even bring that up? I think you go into bars, which is like sanitation workers go, and the girls know. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> you go to sanitation bars, dude. There's, there's like, a lot. What? You know, they got Red Sox bars, they got Yankees bars, they also you got, they got sanitation, sanitation bar. bars. 100%. Really? And the girls are just down for it. They know, bro. They're sanitation sluts. Yeah, give me that trash yeah. dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Junkyard cops. Let's go. No, Our shit I don't is know. What dump. do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you probably got to bring it up like after you're because then you don't want to lie, though, because like you go on five dates and you're like, yo, by the way, I'm also a, a garbage. Man. I think it's on some mafia shit. You to make them think you're in the mafia. Almost you say you, you're a garbage man and then you pull out crazy wads of cash. Yeah. So they're like, yeah. oh, maybe he's in the mafia. And then when they're in too deep, you're like, no, I, I, I throw away garbage. Are you too good for that? Yeah. Let's see the lifestyle I, I give us. Your little fucking advertising job that makes 60,000 a year. You broke bitch. <sighs> Is that like yeah. the opposite of finding out your girl is like an OnlyFans girl? It's you know there. I mean? It's the same there thing. The That's what I mean. It's like yeah. the inverse. Yeah. I think some of the stigma is gone with it. Like it's not as much as it used to be. Well, like, the cleaner shit gets, the less stigma will be. Okay. Like the problem is they still got to touch the bags. Like in in Europe, and I hate being one of these motherfuckers. Like in Europe, they figured out a way. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know how these motherfuckers go. Yeah. But like, they yeah, speak like, so many like, languages. Yeah, They're so smart. I fucking hate these. <laughs> so it's like, but in Europe, at least in like Spain. You put your garbage in this 
bigger garbage receptacle on the street and then the car the garbage truck drives by and then the truck itself lifts it and dumps it into the car mm -hmm. oh, so yeah, they're yeah. never even touching the garbage okay so those dudes got it but they yeah. shouldn't get paid the same they should get that shit should <laughs> you, get got, you get paid for the smell i'm not paying yeah. that How much, tax much do you smell for you to yeah. not touch yeah. trash yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. get out of here but you feel me like that stigma yeah. probably in is, isn't as bad oh, yeah. there he's a truck driver you're a truck driver you're a truck driver mm -hmm. yeah. you're a teamster yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right you're a teamster there it is but if you're actually picking up the garbage like they do here, yeah, and you picking up the trash cans that don't even got the bag in it, you know, New York City trash cans, the oh, mesh yeah. ones, yeah, you yeah. know what the fuck is in there, yeah. like needles and shit. We gotta advocate for them, and the way that people are advocating for OnlyFans girls, we gotta do that for the trash. Right, work. Uh, right, uh, yeah, destigmatize trash work. That's I mean, fact. Right. Trash work is real work. Right now they doing better than OnlyFans girls, so. Oh yeah, only, <laughs> OnlyFans girls struggling. Yeah, huh? they struggling. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean, all? Of them? I mean, yeah, like the the, the top point five percent is killing it, and everybody yeah, else is fucking. It. Yo, not you know the only thing worse than your girl being on OnlyFans. Yeah, your girl uh, yeah. failing at OnlyFans. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. That shit is fucking horrendous. Imagine you're with her. She's like, I'm gonna do OnlyFans. I'm gonna make money. Blah blah. Yeah, Does right. it? Makes nothing, yeah, and then got to come crawling back to you. Now you looking at this bitch like nobody, nobody wants, wants you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, not even the top ten percent. You weren't no. like you couldn't get the point zero zero one. You had to be fucking um, everybody. 60? Everybody flooded the market though. Yeah, yeah. twenty twenty. Everybody sitting at home like I. Yeah, it was about to be a market tits. correction and self confidence. Yeah. I also think you just got to find your niche. Like <laughs> you got to just find your niche. There's some girls that are hot enough they can just post face pics. And they're they're in the point zero one. Really? Yeah. And if you can't get there, then I think you gotta just find. Nobody your paying for faces, bro. Nah. Well, I mean, you pay for the parasocial relationship. But if you can get the uh, if you if like if you got but her face. No, yeah. no. So this is a huge part. Only fans. A lot of dudes don't realize. It's like they think they're texting the 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 girls. Oh my god. And basically, these only fans girls are part of uh, agencies, and the agencies hire people to manage their accounts. They have a call have center with Indian guys DMing them back and forth. Yeah. And you think you're talking to some hot girl. Let me tell you something. If you're talking to an Indian guy, you're going to know. <laughs> she gonna be, why is this so aggressive? <laughs> yeah. Making this so talking about, hey, talking about getting married already? What is this? <laughs> Show me your big cock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to talk about uh, New Zealand banning smoking? That's interesting. No more tobacco. They didn't ban it. They banned it for people born after 2008. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. vaping is not banned. That's what's very curious about this whole thing. Hmm. You can still vape, but you can't smoke cigarettes, hmm. which I like as a non-smoker. When people tell my friends who smoke, vaping is worse for you. Yeah. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's better Smoking for me. is bad for me if you <laughs> smoke. Keep that shit out of my face. Hmm. Vaping, as long as it don't affect me, vape it up. Kill yourself faster. I don't give a shit. That's a good point. So you have the right to kill yourself. Yeah, yeah you have the right to kill yeah. yourself. Just don't make me smell it and kill me. Yeah. Secondhand smoke. Oh, so is that why they're doing it? Maybe. I thought that they were trying to like create a law that would look out for their people, like in the same way that we make uh, heroin illegal or crack. That might be. New Zealand's government is obviously wilding. That's why yeah. uh, fucking uh, Izzy left. But it also, if that's what they're doing, why only after 2008 just ban smoking and make vaping legal? Like keep vaping Well, legal. people are addicted. Yeah. But you can go from cigarettes to vape. You still get your nicotine hit. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, but I don't think it's, it's not the same. Like, yeah. Some people is just like, ah, I prefer smoking over vaping, and now you're going to force me to switch it over. Mm. Tell those like, people to smoke some cock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was all tobacco products, because I thought they were banning dip also. I, if I'm not mistaken, the bottom of the article that was uh, that Miles linked to said uh, vaping was not illegal. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I, I don't know. That's a weird one. I don't know. It's an odd choice. It's just a really weird thing. Yeah. Now, either they're looking out for the secondhand smoke people, or is this just government fucking everything up like they always do? Where it's just like you're trying to help, but it's just you know, overcorrect, overreach, and you don't actually do anything. And how much of that secondhand smoke works? You can't smoke inside nowhere anymore. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, who's getting secondhand smoke nowadays? You're not stopping secondhand smoke. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's crazy. People just smoke back on, on planes, dude. Everywhere. That shit's insane. Restaurants, everywhere. and they still say that. Why do yeah, they still have to say smoking section? It? Like yeah. when they we get on a plane and they're like, "There's a non-smoking flight." Like, do you really have to say it still? Because every time you get on a plane next to an old dude, they go. I used to remember when I could smoke on these things. So it's to remind those old bastards, yo, don't hey, smoke don't here. Do it. When that generation dies out, they're not going to say that. They anymore. should do what New Zealand does. It's That's just why. you can kind of age out. If you're over 50, you can smoke on the plane. Yeah. Everyone else, nah, you got to vape or do dip or something. Do you think that cigarettes will just stop? Yeah. Like being, yeah. you think it will just stop being like a common thing that yeah. people use? In, in the New same Zealand. way that like, like driverless <laughs> wait what's that no I said in New Zealand yeah nah but like here like, yeah. do you here, think eventually nah. it'll just become antiquated yeah 
I mean, it really? is it is antiquated. Yeah, this even point. my wife really? doesn't know any. She was like, I didn't know any smoke. I was always so grossed out. I barely knew any smokers. We all knew smokers. Even if you were grossed out by it, you knew motherfuckers smoked. And now, if I I don't remember the last time I saw a young kid smoking cigarettes, unless it's the same way they wear them fucking wired headphones for the aesthetic. Mm. You vape. Ah, uh, yes. Unless yeah, you're trying to be throwback. No, nah, I don't think cigarettes go away. I see like it's like uh it's like drinking kind of. Like a lot of people learn it when you're doing those activities and you pick something up early and then you're Yeah, but there's no for substitute for drinking. That's what I'm saying. Young kids just vape. Yeah, that's what I was there's thinking. No like vape for alcohol. transition into vape. That's what he said when he well, said I mean, driverless now cars. In New York vaping is illegal. So now they can't. Yeah. Uh, so Wait, it's illegal? Yeah, you can't buy the, the car. Oh, that's so cartridges. stupid. Let these little kids blow their fucking face off. I don't have to smell <laughs> cigarettes on them. Wait, at all? You can't buy any cartridges in yeah. New York? No. Really? Talk, cigarettes are so wild. If you go to the club where they still allow smoking, your clothes smell for two days. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I didn't realize they banned it all together. I guess, yeah. In New York, bro. I guess. Fuck. Um, guys, we got to wrap this up. This is a big week for me. I got to get out of here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where are you going now? I have to go uh, pick a little of something up. I got to pick up my girl's uh, ring. Her wedding ring. Ooh. Did you get your ring yet? Yeah. Fire? I got a few. L a little something nice? I got a little something nice. Yeah. What do you mean you got a few? I got like options. He's got I can pass 10 that fingers, like idiot. Stockton. He's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> no, stupid. like I got like a little <laughs> funky thing and then I got like a more traditional thing. Ah. So. Okay. And okay. then, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gotta mix it up a little, little bit. Song, song. You know what I mean? Song, song. They just have one. Our rings aren't, aren't as crazy as their rings. They no, can be, the though. Thing. Yeah. That's why I told my girl. I was like, whatever I'm spending on your ring, I'm spending on my ring. Gang. Yeah, that's the deal. That's and the that's deal. actually what I did. Really? <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, I didn't that. actually mean for that to happen, but I looked back afterwards. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I was Probably. right. Yeah, I got to re-up on that, I think. Yeah, man. But, yeah, I don't know. Guys, thank you guys so much for listening, man. We'll see you on Patreon. Uh, Friday. We're recording that tomorrow, Tuesday. So if any crazy shit goes down Wednesday, mm. Thursday, just know that we're all, uh, well, I'm out there preparing for a wedding and these guys are about to fly out and be at the wedding. And uh, thank you guys so much for all yep. the well wishes. And so thank you for spreading the word. And this is the last podcast. No, tomorrow's podcast is going to be the last one we record uh, for the year, but we banked a few podcasts earlier the last couple of weeks so you'll have podcasts throughout the rest of the year just know that the last one in that chronology is yep. the one we're doing tomorrow. you know what we got to talk about on patreon what's that miss india wins miss universe oh, i know Yo, we gotta talk about this shit. i need job. to see this girl bro i need nah, to see this you'll see it on fire. patreon you'll see it on patreon okay you'll see okay yeah. guys we love you we appreciate you Peace. god bless